Flat B, where MMA and UFC get silly. This is the Lat B Podcast. Welcome back. Welcome back. This is Lat B MMA Podcast. I'm Emmanuel. And as always, my partner in crime, Chaney, let us know what we're doing today. Today, first on our list, we are going to recap UFC 245, that spectacular fight card. And then we are going to hop in the spaceship and fly through the Twitterverse and uh, land on Planet Fight Pick Championship and talk about who might have stuck their flag in that this week. And uh, then, last but not least, while you're all here, we're going to break down UFC, is it Bukan? Busan. Busan. Train to Busan. We're taking that train to I Busan. I knew my Anglo tongue would not be able to say it right. <laughs> uh, UFC Busan. So, yes. It's going to be a fun one. It's going to have all sorts of interesting stuff. But that recap, that pay-per-view we just had oh was absolutely gosh. hot fire. Ho! Oh, one for the ages, I'm glad we held off on them Latbees. I'm glad we're going to have a little bit of time because there's contenders in there. That was just star-studded night of you, finishes. You aren't lying. I loved it. Absolutely. I loved it. Are we going to break it down like we always do? Always going from the bottom to the top. Starting it off was at 185 pounds. Siriano coming in and finishing with the left hook. Oscar Pichota. I was going with Pichota. It hurt. It hurt a lot. One of the few ones I ended up getting wrong. But, man, Pachota just likes to eat them punches. Didn't get to the ground like we needed him to in there. Siriano, I'm still not all in on this young man. He can swing. He can bang, bro. But I still see that there's there's openings in his fight game. He's still young, though. A lot of I love the way he looked. It's kind of, it's not, I can't say it's exactly what I saw happening. Um, it's really just more of, I think, uh, Pachota's climaxed as far as his growth in the UFC. And I do think, um, we're going to need to see some new Hawaiian blood come up eventually. We'll talk about that more later, but, uh, I stayed away from this fight altogether. So it did not help me at all for the round one finish, which Siriano was on that main card it ended up definitely cashing out for a lot of people because he scored a good amount of points knocking down but i believe twice in that fight so still i just see gas tank issues with that young man if they can withstand some of those punches Pachota wasn't i agree it's time to get on out of here my friend i believe that's a three fight losing streak for Pachota. Oh, wow. all finishes as well so it's like all right time to go all right mini uh who's that big tall Goofy looking Struve. Struve, like Mini Struve. Struve. <laughs> Get right. out, out of here, Mini right. Struve. <laughs> <laughs> so then we move on to Worldwide Winning Federation's number one fighter, the Evil Eye, coming through as a big underdog here. Arujo just gassing after one round. Evil Eye. Woo! Your girl coming My in girl. hot. I knew it. I kind of knew it was going to go exactly like this. Uh, the veteranship, the grindability, and I have to say, uh, Evil Eye's hands look so much better than they used to. Uh, but it was almost... People don't assume just because Valentina did something, somebody else is capable of doing that. Which thing. we warned people of. We said, Arujo ain't that good, guys. Come on. But, oh. I had eye decision, so if this, Great everybody's call. lucky this wasn't on the Fight Pick Championship. Great call. This was definitely a bit of a snoozer of a fight, but what I absolutely despised by the end of this was how she was mad at my boy Joe Rogan. Saying, I don't want to talk to you, Joe. Not the time you saw Joe's face. He was like, this bitch. This fuck. Yeah, I'll get you on my pot. Nobody gives a fuck, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I would tune in and listen to Jessica High. Would you? Yeah, it just doesn't need to be a three-hour one. <laughs> Good 45 minutes. Maybe yeah, 50, like, 15. <laughs> I'm interested a little bit. Like, she was in the UFC and then out for a long thing. She's Yeah, I guess it's not really that interesting. Yeah, I don't want to see her on there. I don't want to see her. I could think of, like, five fighters on this card alone that might be a little more. Thank you very much. And you're a fan. 
Yeah, so. I'm not a huge fan. <laughs> Our audience knows how I feel. She is the fighter who still blocks us, and I'm the only one that had her to pick win this fight, and she didn't even get to hear me. <laughs> I'm the only person out there. Everybody else was like, Arreo all day. She ruined so many people's cards. So many people, mine included in there. She was expansive. There. I put eye on a few cards as my cheap, one of my cheap 7,000 fighters uh, on DraftKings. She and came it through? definitely came through. She Her striking did definitely look better coming off of such a uh, catastrophic loss. Do got to give her her props because, hey, that kind of a finish, it's hard to get back in there and look good. And she definitely did that. So credit yeah, yeah. to the evil eye herself. Then we moved on to 125 pounds where I had my first win of the night, an underdog. We had Brandon Moreno coming in against Kai Kara France, the city kickboxing prospect. Told you out of those four guys... Kai Kara is not the best one by far. He's the one in the back of the line. See, I don't feel that way. I like both guys still going forward. I just think Brandon Moreno keeps getting that much better. He looked good everywhere. Yep. We usually know him to be this jujitsu guy, and I thought his hands looked pretty Amazing. spectacular, especially against a guy who considers himself a striker. Agreed. So I actually just think it's the it's the testament to how good Brandon Moreno is getting, and I'm kind of mad at myself that I doubted that Moreno would pull this out here because I'm not a huge Kakara France guy, but right. I am a big Brandon Moreno fan and he never gave me reason to doubt him in this fight i think he do you think he had all three rounds i think the first round could have went to kai but the second two pretty handedly i mean the fight was still close fairly if it would have went kai kara split decision i would have been a little more upset because i thought that moreno did do enough to win at least two of those rounds and it was that jab he was just boxing him up as you were saying cleanly Kai couldn't do anything. This stayed striking. Did it? I believe it might have won fight of the night. I could be wrong. No, it didn't. I know it won fight of the night. We'll get there. But uh, moving forward, as you're saying, I still like both guys moving forward. I think they're both going to stay in the division for a while. Yeah. Then, the div division's still there, so. Right, yeah. right, right. So fight anybody, anytime. Yeah. Just keep, keep them fighting in there. Then we move on to 145 pounds where we had Chase Hooper, Ben Askren's adopted son from another mother against Tay Lesson out there. We told you Tay Lesson fuck it up. Uh, we told you he shit in bed. He absolutely did. He landed that right hand I that I was worried about. I thought you told people to go with Tay Less in this. I, I was... <laughs> 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 but I, I was uh, hesitant on Tay Less. I did think that he had a puncher's chance, and he showed that in the first round. He landed his first overhand right cleanly. Hooper just got it to the ground, and once it got to the ground, once Hooper just stayed on him like... Uh, an octopus there well, Taylor crawling all over him. Well, grabbed him by that crazy, what was it, a guillotine? And it drug him up the fence. By his fence. throat. Yeah, and, uh, but the whole time, uh, Hooper was, like, waving off the ref. I'm totally fine. Like, right. he didn't seem worried at all. Like, who knows where, maybe he even had him a little by the clavicle. It was a darts. Neck, or a darts, yeah. And maybe he even had him a little lower than high, so he right. wasn't in danger at all, as weird as it looked for us but he didn't seem like he was in harm's way at any point in that fight he pushed off of the cage by his throat at one point in time did hooper but again once he got it to the ground he was just sucking him in getting him he had a rear naked choke on tamor in there that a lesser man would have been passed out tamor fought it without fighting the hands he yeah. just let the choke set in and he's just Face turning all right. I'm like, all right, this is over. Gets out of it. Yeah. But eventually succumbed to a triangle elbow TKO. Not a submission because he was just cutting Tayless apart in I'm there. I'm going to say something. Um, I'm kind of, it, it, I know the lap bees are coming up and we'll get more into that once we're in the Twitterverse. Uh, we'll swing through Planet Lap B and see what's going on. But um I think Hooper, I, I think the next genre, you know how we're in the entertainment era right now of UFC, oh, yeah. I think we're going to see the tall man genre, where we're going to see these tall, lanky guys that are, their bodies are cutting weight differently. Uh, the, you know, the Zabits, those kind of tall, the violent Bob Rosses. Uh, I Josh think Chase, Yeah, Chase Hooper's kind of one of those guys. Not tall man like uh, Vic yeah, that, not, but that's not like, that, but it's a different kind of tall man genre where we see these tall, lanky guys. But, I mean, I like Hooper. I'm a huge fan of the kid. I can't wait to see who they pick next for him. 
All that being said, I just felt like this was a setup fight from the beginning. I had a round one finish. Absolutely a setup fight. And as I'm saying with the striking, this young man, if somebody can keep him off of him, all of a sudden it's like, whoa, his striking isn't as good as we thought because he does leave his head on a straight line. So I'm really well, he's interested. He's so young. Yes. 20 like, years he's old. He's so young. You only have time to like get good at one thing right now. Sure. But I do think if he he needs to get away from a jujitsu camp and get into a striking camp. A lot. Definitely a lot more striking, but still fun to see him have hopefully a long career in the UFC. I don't know shit about him. What do I know about where so, he's fighting out of? I'm just... It dabbles into the Twitterverse stuff, but Ben Askren and Hooper have been having a back and forth because people are calling him his son. And he's just like, oh, look, it is my son. And Hooper's like, hey, Dad, where'd you go? I said I didn't like wrestling and you never came back. Oh, yeah, I saw that. That was really cute. <laughs> That's pretty um, awesome. Yeah, and I'm like... Uh, Hey, Dad, uh, I don't talk to losers. <laughs> oh, coming out swinging. Damn, uh, damn. <laughs> so, hey, he has the same career as Ben Askren, or officially the same uh, winning amount of wins as Ben Askren in the UFC. Yeah, he's already be he's tied at the tied record, with and he's not controversial. <laughs> <laughs> so, definitely uh, Tay Less, Tay Moore in there. Because he won one previously to this, he probably gets one more, but I could see him being on a two-fight leasing streak and out of there. We just know what we get with from him, and he just hasn't shown an evolution in his game. Hooper, sky's the limit. Put him against anyone Unless right now. Unless we're going to start seeing a couple of these sandbags come into the ESPN era of UFC, yep. where we're like, up, oh, they all, like, you know they how the Globetrotters him. beat every team they play? <laughs> <laughs> right. Are yeah, those, the feeder fish. Are those refs regulation or what? Yeah. <laughs> so definitely a uh, fun prospect moving up in there. Then we went to a couple of old dogs at 170 pounds with Matt Brown finishing Ben Saunders in there. Bit of controversy in there because there was a stalemate on the ground that was stood up that started the end for Ben Saunders. When it was on the ground, when Matt Brown tripped him and went there, I was like, you are the stupidest son of a gun i ever seen, Matt Brown. Why would you go to the ground with Saunders? He's using that rubber guard. He's getting him all locked up. Matt Brown's just stalemating him. And then the ref stands it up out of nowhere. And then Ben Saunders is done. Been saying that chin's done. It's just ground and pound TKO. I don't think it's a big win for Matt Brown. I don't take much from it other than... It is time, my friend. Please, please get Before on out of here. For the probably fifth time. Right. Get for your own health. Get on out of here, Ben Saunders. But Matt Brown, too. Um, dude, unless you have another setup fight like this, I don't want to see it. Agreed. I he didn't look good in there. Here. Didn't look good no, in there. Didn't. His body looks like it's losing some of its muscle definition. Yeah, he's definitely he's getting a atrophy. Hard like thirty-eight. He's, <laughs> he's a hard thirty-eight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so same for both of them. I'd like to see him go. Matt Brown, I don't see him beating too many other people other than like the Neil Magny potentialies or guys super on their way out. So, anything with those guys as we go on in the UFC? No. Then we had um, Omari Akhmedov come in against Ian Heinish in a underdog, getting it right in a decision here. Omari ended up out wrestling and striking Heinish a little bit. Heinish just has that gas tank, but the lack of takedown defense is just starting to accumulate on his career, and you see him getting This taken was the most boring fight of the night. This was a bore. Akhmedov just stayed up and threw that overhand right and would just stand in front of him. It could have been split either way, and you couldn't be mad at it, honestly. Yeah, I had Heinish, but I had no care in it. <laughs> <laughs> The one you did have, one you were hot on, was Irene Aldana coming in against Caitlin Vieira. I was all over Vieira. I think Boy, I was, was the only I person who sung with Al hung with Aldana and then freaking changed her Saturday morning. What am I doing? What am I? I'm, but I'm so glad because we always say play fight picks throughout the week and don't go back and change them because sometimes you're you're having different feelings for things. Uh, and I'm so glad a, mo a majority of my cards had Aldana on them though. And what a classic KO she got in there. Left hook getting it done in the first round. Vieira standing in front of the boxer thinking she could outstrike her where the whole breakdown, I'm like, this lady gets in on the hips, trips, 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 takedowns, gets on the ground, BJJ, nasty belt. This bitch goes in there and thinks she's freaking some sort of a striker against a real striker. Vieira didn't look necessarily good after a long layoff, but Aldana looked even that much better. Her and Grasso have really been stepping it up, liking their training, 
definitely somebody I've been high on a lot and sketched out because she has lost some really I shitty fights. I agree with you. Aldana and Grasso have the same kind of trajectory from their camps right now and that they're both... Pr- Patchy, pr- sketchy. Yeah, but right now I feel really they're great hot. about both. Yeah, they're but, the, hot. but they're both their striking is so tight right it's now. It's dialed in. Both their striking. Yep. So... Yeah. Aldana still gets hit in there, so don't think that it was her up. next fight. Think of how crazy this is. Is Amanda Nunes. That's that's this That's division. a little steep. That's, that's mo- this division. But that's so one dimensional because I see as Aldana being a striker with takedown defense, not a grappler at all, where we see Amanda being everything. Didn't that what you thought was gonna happen with this fight though with Vieira? Just take down and then finish? And then a finish, and boy, did it, how did it not go that way? Aldana, again, being able to keep it where she wanted to because Vieira didn't even attempt a clinch in there. Aldana just doing what she wanted. Great call on that one. What a big underdog. Then we moved on to 170 pounds where we had Mike Platinum Perry coming against Jeff Neal. Neal in there, I feel like the magic bean in here was literally saying, man, Neil's landing pretty good. I can't wait to see that head kick come out because it, it comes out of nowhere. Literally a second later, bink! Yeah. Off yeah. the dome, a witness to it. It was just the beginning of the end. Flurry on Perry. He actually got hit with a left and a right afterwards. Slumped into it himself. He's a warrior in there. Is he though? Like, <laughs> is Perry, where are we at with Mike Perry? We know Jeff Neal, we move him forward. Whoever win the 170, that's toward that top 15 guy. But where are we with Mike Perry? He would beat a lot of the up-and-comer. If he's a gatekeeper, it's for the guys that are coming in to the UFC because he has that kind of a name. He can't be fighting guys that are specifically this nasty of strikers. Um, Well, I guess the UFC essentially used Perry as a stepping stone here because Neal, even though we knew about him, Yeah. The casuals did it, and now they're like, Mike Perry was my favorite fighter, and he just got iced. Jeff Neal's my new favorite fighter. <laughs> like, I, You know what? That's never happened to me with a fight. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, ever, ever, ever. I guess. Since I've been watching UFC, I've right. never seen a fighter lose, and the guy who beat him is my new fave. Like, one of my favorites. If they you never lost, transferred that energy. Ever. I'm not like, Good point. I love Ronda. Holly Good Holmes point. knocks her out, and now Holly's my favorite. That did not happen. <laughs> So I, I don't. I think I always think that's weird because people say steal someone's shine or get their fans. Sure. And even I think it was uh, Jan, Jan that's like, I hope Uriah Faber's fans become my fans. <laughs> like, I don't think that happened. You can't ask for it. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so yeah, I like Jeff Neal going forward, but I'm kind of I'm a little over Mike Perry, and I feel like I made so much betting against Mike Perry. I feel like I have as well. And I will continue because I think he's a casual jump on. I feel like guys on the... Mike Perry, Matt Brown? Give me Mike Perry all day. Is that one... I think that's 185, Matt Brown? That's 170, Matt Brown. Is it? Oh, well, if Matt's... Yeah, that's a perfect fight. Perfect, perfect. That's fight. actually and a great like fight. like six months from now, but that's a perfect... Yeah. That is a good call. That is a great call for both guys because Mike Perry, the brutality that he puts into yep. his fights, and I think he has a good enough name like Matt Brown, like people know they're going to be entertained when they get there. That's perfect, and we know it's going to be a stand-up fight, like a stand-in banger. Like, I love that. I love that. I think you just had the best uh, pick for Perry going. You just reconvinced me to sign him to the UFC. I was Max about Baker. to let him go. <laughs> you, I was about to let him go. <laughs> You're about to just transfer over. I was like, I guess he's get going on, to one. I get, guess he's going to one. <laughs> so, definitely some good fights ahead for that young man. Then we move on to the fight pick no, champion. We do not. We move on to the Twitterverse. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Sorry. I forgot we were still in the... Oh. I was like, wait, main card. The main we go card. To the the fight it. big yeah. championship. Yeah, you're right. We be getting to that scoring for all of us. Your boy over here. Emmanuel's taking down the fight big championships. Number one. Lat B holding it down. Everyone getting out. Got <laughs> up. You getting... Eaten up in this bitch. <laughs> A cool 40, getting all sorts of hot points. It was a fun main Rolling event. Rolling in carpet, <laughs> peeing on you, <ya>, whacking <laughs> off. Wait, this got weird. Hit the bonus. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, this main card started off hot with Peter Yon against your eye favor, as you were saying. Peter Yon getting it done. Round number three. 
Faber showing toughness. Was it that first round that that eye swole up? And we're like, all right, dude, call the fight. You don't need to keep getting beat up. You're 40 years old. It's done. Yeah, it was nasty. We it was nasty. It was we're done. like, we know you're tough, Uriah. Done. He ended up getting front Because he had never finished. been finished before. Right. Uh, well, he had been finished. Oh, never in the like, UFC. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. So. Correction! <laughs> but Faber in there, I mean, he said he's not done. He said he's not done fighting. He's going to have other fights after this. Yeah, he can fight. He's got to fight a lot lesser caliber than Peter Young. Here's what I say: the same as I feel about Matt Brown. Yep. If Uriah Faber, especially at this weight class, not that they don't hit hard, but it's far less than like Matt Brown at 170. But I think like Uriah Faber, Dom Cruz, interested. Uriah Faber, uh, Aldo, interested. Uriah Faber, Marlon, Mar like not Marlon, but keep him with the older. There's like these legacy uh, for Faber Dillashaw. Love it. Like, there's these older mm -hmm. echelon dudes that if we could keep it with these legacy fights that are big names that can headline fight cards with storyline behind them, then I'm all for Faber staying because he has a lot of story with a lot of different dudes. Oh, yeah. There are some legacy fights for sure left for Cody's your Because Cody's not Faber. there anymore, right? He is. Actually, Cody being in the background, I think he cross trains for sure, but Cody being in the background <laughs> of the UFC over in the parking lot getting it on with Jan. Did you see that little skirmish they had in the Ugh, bus alley? Cody's um, temperament is the number one reason that I will never, ever pick him inside oh, the octagon again. And guess what? No Mercy Jan's going to come after everything because he's a guy who just uh, has one of those Twitter presence that doesn't pull punches, but that's because his publicist, I mean, Peter Jan is, you know, always on his Twitter. So as you were saying with the fans, do you think this was a big coming out for Le Casuals? Because he did finish your eye of favor. There is a lot of people that are like, I've never seen that guy be finished in the U.S. Yeah, I do. I actually think people will, you don't, this is what I do think for hardcores versus casuals. You might get casuals to just notice you. You don't steal someone's fan. Any fan that's like, I hate Ryer Favor. Now I like Yawn. Like, you're a douche. But if you're like, oh, wow, this guy really impressed me. He went in there and beat one of my favorite fighters. I'm now a fan of his. I do think that can happen. I don't think you steal a dude's shine. I think they kind of, uh, like... You get the rub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get yeah, the rub. rub. You get a little rub. You get that... So <laughs> You get a little salt. Salt. <laughs> a little taste of that. So... Definitely fun to see they can fight anybody in the division. But Jan's getting close to that title fight here very, very quickly at 135 pounds. We stay in the division in a dirty, dirty split. The first time Jose Aldo's ever been at 135 against Magic Marlon Marias coming off of that belt contention. This was controversial. We all know what really happened in there. Jose Aldo won the last two rounds. I don't care what you say. Jose Aldo won the last two rounds. I give Marias the first. I picked Marias on my five pick championship, so it helped me get that first place. But it was wrong. Jose Aldo won that fight. Everybody knows Jose Aldo won, including Marlon Marais. That's why he was crying before they even announced who won. He wasn't crying because he felt like he solidified a victory. He was crying because he knew he lost that shit. I was the only person that stuck with Aldo that I know. Everyone jumped ship. They all thought he looked bad. And I was out on Twitter fighting with assholes because they were like, are you kidding? He looks awful on that scale. And I'm like, you haven't seen him weighing at 145 then because he didn't almost faint. Agreed. He didn't almost, he looks stronger than any other Aldo that I've ever seen. 100%. I know it seems crazy that he lost 10 more pounds, but I just think that is what we are seeing, the future of dietitian, working with somebody that's knowledgeable in your food and your intake, and maybe a guy that's a little older and taking it a little more seriously than a guy who used to maybe once party. I thought Aldo looked great in there. I'm excited for him in this division. And Marlon Marais, I'm going to say it. Not that Marlon Marais is a bad fighter, but I think it was a fluke. I think Aljo beats him every time they fight, uh, after that, I think that kick was a fluke, and I think he went off on a hot spin. It reminds me a lot of Till. I think it's a very similar trajectory where it's like one, you know, not that everybody doesn't have a puncher's chance, mm -hmm. but that puncher's chance when you watch guys go too far too fast because they won something off a puncher's chance, we always, like, this was proof. To me, it's like there, it was oh, yeah. almost like the UFC is in a weird way. I don't know if it's Vegas. I don't know if it's the commission, but they fucked Aldo. This is Sorry, one of those... Sorry, that's a long thing. This won't burn me up. It, this... I couldn't even enjoy the rest of the fights. I was <laughs> like, I don't even care about Amanda Nunes. <laughs> this one was definitely controversial. But what we do know, as you're saying, with Marais, we know the game plan. 
Get him out of that first round, and he will be very limited on just his power. I mean, he was just shocked. And I gassed. think he's a head case. And yep. I uh, think that he had his confidence broken in the Cejudo fight, and that confidence was still not back in this fight. Agreed. Like, he is a broken man right now. Like, he needs a psychiatrist and a voice coach. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he's that tiny little. <laughs> but I so, was really burnt up about Aldo. So, Aldo, fight anybody. Marais still being the number two guy in there. Do you want to see Aldo versus Dominic Cruz? Do you want to see Aldo versus TJ Dillashaw? Do Cody Garbrandt. Do you want to see Cody Garbrandt? Faber. I just think this click of one, all of a sudden, the 135ers, I'm like, yes, I will take that bucket of 135ers and I will eat it to the... I love it. I love it. It's like Aldo adds some spice into it. Oh, yeah. But he didn't throw any leg kicks this fight. Where he used to be known, this fight not at all. Just stayed boxing, did his thing at range. They say you got to finish the I fight in there. He did not throw as many leg kicks. Not as at all. Has. Not as much But he volume. hasn't in a lot of fights yeah, recently. His, his it's the same changed. thing that people said about the Max Holloway fight is oh, Aldo didn't throw his signature leg kicks as, not, as much as he should. Right. Uh, the other thing, did you see Cejudo afterwards said, we all know who won that fight, and he kind of called out Aldo? And Dana White even said, I see Aldo being the number two guy right now because he won that fight. Here's what I heard, and I'm going to give full props uh, to uh, Juice. Uh, fighting with myself podcast and it's the first time I heard it and I'm like I am all for that and I actually see I don't want to talk about it yet you know what I'm going to save it I think it's something that'll come up again and it's better later uh, but I don't want Aldo to get that Cejudo fight I want Aldo to get the legacy 135 fights and I want those group of guys to all have fights I think guys like Marlon Marais and Aljo those are still guys that I see running for the title in the division so I do want them in a different category of dudes and I think these guys that are super big names that we've been watching for years like lay down leather those are the guys I want to see fight so Aldo I think he has tons of fights and Marais Whatever makes you feel good, dude. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to have many fights being the number two official like guy that, in there. girlfriend. Whatever you feel good about. <laughs> <laughs> but definitely, um, stylistically, it was a fun striking matchup we had. Then we got into all the belts. Then we got into the three consecutive belts with Amanda Nunes coming in and defending her title against GDR. In one of the tougher fights she's had in a long time, honestly. GDR getting her with that up kit. Getting her in a couple rounds, hurting Amanda. Amanda in that first round, flurrying and gassing to me. I know people were really giving her a lot of credit, but I re she tried to finish GDR, and then they're like, I'm glad she didn't finish so she could sh show her full range. I'm like, well, she held she on. Said, you guys, I wanted to show you that I had a whole camp and this and that, and I'm like, no, this is what really happened. All y'all, I saw all of Twitter. Y'all slept on GDR. Yep. We told you it was the best striker that Amanda's ever gone against. Um, both of us picked Amanda to finish. We did think toward the later rounds that she'd eventually... I had a submission. I had a TKO round four or uh, five. I, I thought she was going to submit her. I, I was... When she came out and said, I didn't try to finish her, I'm like, oh, yeah, you did. Right in yeah. the first round, you tried to finish her. Exactly. Uh, also, I have to say, and everyone's like, I don't know what way you expect it to go. Amanda won first fight. Uh, yeah, but GDR, I think better hands, but I mean, and I think it was a testament how much better her hands were because Amanda would have stayed striking with her if she was winning that. How much better did her ground game look, her def defense? Did she far. got Amanda Newton's submission in the third, didn't she, or second? Close, or fourth, I believe it was, but it was the only round they gave, maybe it was a third, they gave two GDR in there with that submission attempt because she was on her back pretty much that entire fight. I agree. Fight. I'm, Amanda was dominant. I'm not taking it anyway. She is the lady goat. Uh, she is really the greatest woman we've seen doing it of all time, and you and I were saying it watching the fights that one of the things that makes her so great is... She didn't come out like Ronda Rousey where she went 10-0 and 0 on this big run. We actually got to see her progress and get better and become who she is now as a fighter and then go through and beat all these champions. There's literally no one left for her to fight. That they try to have some boxer come out. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Priscilla, that. I couldn't tell you either, but... Amanda said her already, no, I'm not going to go box you because that doesn't make any sense. Coming in MMA, and guess what? As soon as you do, I'm going to take your ass down, and I'm going to submit you because I'm a black belt. Well, here's something that I did not know, and it was it's interesting to me. Uh, 
in men, all the men want to fight boxers because of the payday compared to MMA. But apparently, in women's sports, Amanda's the A side of that. Like she, in oh, women's yeah. sports, women's boxing, they don't get paid nearly what MMA lady fighters. Get. I'm gonna fill you in on a secret. I in the know, en- a on secret. Tell it, me in my ear. Don't tell them. Just <laughs> in the NBA, the men get paid way more than the WNBA. <laughs> <laughs> Like a lot. <laughs> like not like two or three dollars more. Like a whole lot more money. Yeah. Uh, but I didn't know that lady UFC fighters made more than lady boxers. Agreed. I would think they'd make more, but I don't think I've seen a lady pay-per-view ever that I can think of. I couldn't name one. Me either. I, so it, that was interesting to me because I was like, why wouldn't Amanda want to take this? Right. Like Connor We're, with Floyd. JJ. Why would she want to? And then I was like, oh, Amanda's the A side. They yeah. need Amanda. But it shows me that there's nothing left for Amanda. I totally agree with that. Totally agree with that. But a little credit to MMA because we have had multiple headlining pay-per-view cards that is held up by our lovely ladies in MMA. So breaking all sorts of stereotypes out there in combat sports. Thanks, Ronda Rousey. UFC. <laughs> <laughs> then... We move on to an upset for the night. We had Alexan- Alexander. So we both the pretty great- much feel real quick to close off that fight. It does no movement for the entire division. Either guy, nothing. It's like Aldana, maybe. They but both can that, fight whoever. Ridiculous. Exactly. Okay. And Aldana was probably has a better. Should probably fight GDR instead of You are of so right. That's actually a really decent stand-up striking. Yeah, that's actually really fun, but she gets eaten alive by GDR. So, then we move on to the co-main event with Alexander the Great Volkanovsky coming in against the Max Blessed Holloway. Holloway getting four-rounded three to two, some say. I say five to... Oh, no, I don't really say that. I think he won four rounds, did Volkanovsky, and I... Believe it was the leg kicks and the lack of output for Max Holloway. It was a close fight. Max has openly been okay with it. But he was upset. He thought he won. He absolutely thought he won. I was surprised in the corner in the third round when his coaches were like, oh, you're up two rounds or the second round. He's like, you're up two rounds. And I'm like, those were the clearest Volk rounds of the entire fight to me. I had it 2-2 going into the fifth. Uh, But I did not, in my personal opinion... I thought Volkanovski looked better everywhere. I thought Max looked like he couldn't pull the trigger, but his body looked different to me. He looks like he's losing muscle definition or something's off. I think Max is in need of a break. I think uh, he's been pushing himself really hard. He's given us a lot of years of fights. I do not think he should retire by any means. I think he has tons of killer fights. I don't think Dustin Poirier, you know, beat the living daylights out of him. I just think Max is being push himself hard, fighting every four months. He's he needs a break. And um congrats to Volkanovsky. City kickboxing is putting out the champions right now and you can't take anything away from him. He did a great game plan against Max Holloway. Two fighters that are champs within essentially a year and a half of joining the UFC two out of one gym. Hooker right in tail as far as just having profile fights and being a uh, marquee on the sign there. So city kickboxing definitely having, I mean, two fighter of the year potentials. Both of those guys. I heard something that um, I, uh, some people think that Dustin Poirier kind of unlocked Max Holloway. Oh, some people. Oh, did you say that on the show? Oh, that did I say, I said exactly. If I'm city kickboxing, I'm watching that Dustin Poirier fight because that is the game plan of how you beat Max Holloway. And that's a, that's what I feel like totally happened. I don't know if Volkanovski's officially said that, but if you needed a hot 25, I got it. Woo! I got a hot 25. A hot 25. So Max, I want to have Woo! a break and I don't want another fight for him right now. I think he's a big enough name to go the BMF route. I think he's a big enough uh, talent to go champion still. I just want him to take, like, if Max takes nine months off, that is great to me. And um, this was close enough. I don't mind seeing it again, but not right away. Not right away. This is what I heard that I'm like, I can't believe I'm saying this it intrigues me, but I actually think it's a friggin' great fight. When Henry Cejudo said, and this is the thing I wanted to give credit to Juice on Fighting With Myself podcast for. When Henry Cejudo said he wanted to fight Max and become a triple belt champion, I thought he was nuts. But Cejudo versus Wolkanovski, to me, is a killer fight. Woo, that's a scary fight for Cejudo. It's a scary fight for Volkanovski. <laughs> I think Cejudo has the better wrestling there. For sure. I think his striking has gotten so much better. I 
I, I, I give the leg kicks to <laughs> Volkanovski, but there's so much about that fight that intrigues the shit out of me. Uh, you're saying a former 240-pounder, according to Joe Rogan. Yeah. Which, have you heard that? I said, yeah. there's no way. What's happening with Joe Rogan is that he has heard it down the pipeline so many times that he's they added, added 30, pounds, 30, 40 pounds. Yeah. Volkanovski officially said the highest he ever got was 214. That's Thir- significantly different. 36 I said, pounds. I said 220, on the, I think, on the show. Six yeah. pounds is different yeah. than 36 pounds. Yeah. So yeah. I'm just saying Joe Rogan's getting his facts a little fucked up there. Yeah, and I he said it, it multiple I bet times. I you Zahuda walks around heavier than you. Oh, I believe that. Like, I believe and, that, and I bet you got inches on him, though. Like, I think you're Ooh, Joe. Like, oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that, Triple C? <laughs> Coup for Whip it out. Whip it out. <laughs> <laughs> he almost did in that very minute viral video. Swan diving all sexy like into that pool. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, I like his shtick now, too. It's like immediately the second that I started to, Colby's shtick started to make me laugh. At the exact same time, that's when I started to like Henry Cejudo. Like, at first, I'm like, what's he doing with the snake? What's he doing with this? bullshit this guy's so corny i hate him he's my least favorite fighter and then it was like all the same arguments i was making about colby it clicked for zahudo and i'm like i fucking love this guy like he made he's making me interested in his fights i agree Um, to watch him anyways yeah i don't really know what's next for volkanovsky but i don't want it to be marlon Oh, wait, that's the 135. 35ers. Uh, so 145. Who do we have coming up the pipe here? Aljo. It's Aljo. Correct. Marlin. Correct. No. No, no. Aljo's no, no, 135. No, no, no. It's, um, there's still a bunch of monsters at 45. No hooker moved out of there. There's guys we're not thinking of right now, but I know there's a couple hot prospects. I feel prospects. like 45 might be, it used to be the hot division the for hot, a bit. But I think it's cool. I want to say Jeremy Stevens is in there, but not he doesn't deserve it. a time yeah, fight. Yeah, there's a beat. Yeah, those are both fun fights. Yeah, against, the, the, especially Volkanovski. You can give him a good run holding the title against guys with no, yeah, ground games. Yeah, yeah it's interesting. And matchups. tall ass guys like that. You were just those saying are interesting. It. I think that's perfect. Yeah. So um, give them that Max. Give them either one of those guys as well, and so, I want to watch that yeah, fight. Max needs to go surfing. I'd like to see him put on what I would like to see for Max Holloway. Him take that nine months off, get into some strength training, put on some real muscle mass onto his body. Not and obviously he's not going to be cut up like Aldo. It's not his body type, but I do want to see Max go up to one fifty five. I think there's some fun fights for him there. I don't. I Agreed. think other than Volkanovski, it's the only one left for him in the division, and I just think it's kind of unnecessary. It's. I think he's done enough at 145. What happens when he beats Volk? He fights the whole rung of guys again. I totally agree. He Aldo moved out of the division because he couldn't do anything. So I agree. 55 should be where Max goes. He's definitely looking so everybody that size. So have we officially moved out of the blessed area era into the great era? Officially, yeah, officially yeah. Over. I think that there's no if ands or buts about it. <laughs> so. so we are now great. So uh, and oh, he's the one who brought the great hot twenty five. You may have only were you the only person with a hot twenty five of the night on the fight pick. Jamie of shows? the night, pulling it away, getting uh, twice as many points as the next person in the contest. Thank you very much. Twice as many points. I doubled up on all you mofos. You killed it, but it was the lowest scoring uh, fight pick championships <laughs> in history. Come, you're oblique kicking me right but, now. You're poking me in the eye right now, JD. I'm, I'm obviously like, hey, look at Lat B still killing it. Obviously, we brought the champ home. Better than... I can get 40 second places in a row. It still ain't first place. It still ain't first place. And... You had a little pep in your step all week, didn't you? Woo! It does something different when you win the... You're like, boom, ba doom 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 I'm walking on sunshine. <laughs> wow! You're like, let me get the door for you, lady. I'm a fight pick champion. Oh, well, right I'm here. The belt's coming. Sunshine. The belt's coming. <laughs> Cleaning the house, <laughs> mopping the floor. Wow! Fight pick champion. You're answering your phone. Thank you for calling the fight pick champion. <laughs> it's fun. So, yeah. Congratulations. That was the only hot fight. And that was the, I think, the key fight. Um, I was the only one who had Volkanovski. It only one. It. The, uh, Buddy ha- had Aldo decision. That would have put him higher up into the list. That, But that's the only equation that I could see that would even be in competition of where you're, you were. There was nothing else that changed it. The Volkanovski decision solidified the win. It was a ballsy movie. It was a huge underdog. And it was. it's kind of a good way to win the Fight Pick Championship. Oh, yeah. It wasn't because you... Because any... Like, my victories, I eke them out. Like It wasn't like, Mariah's 20 hot 25 or something yeah. like that. Yeah, Some totally. dirty ass like that. Yeah. <laughs> We, you know who we're talking to. <laughs> <laughs> then we get into the main event. A fight of the year candidate. They went to war. 
these guys got it done in there. It was a civil war officially to them. There was a jaw broken. I had it three rounds to two until the finish in the fifth round. Kamara Usman came out on top. You got to trust well, two, two, Usman. Right? I had it 3-1 or 3-2 or 3-1. But okay, I thought Kobe one. won the first, second, and fourth. Usman had the third. And then the fifth, Kobe was winning. But once the knockdown happened, it was a 10-8 round. And it could have it would have been a draw for me. That's the way I judged it on my verdict. Little shout out to Verdict there, but that's just the way I saw the fight real time. I also had three rounds for Colby. I thought he did enough to pull him out each round. Um, I thought obviously Usman landed with the stronger punches. Uh, the fact that Colby stayed as well as he did after the broken jaw in the second uh, was a testament to him for me. I don't think people should give him shit anywhere. He's the clear number two guy. Usman, by the end, once the knockdown happened to me, Usman, because I had it so even going into that last round that once the last round was happening, Colby was doing enough that I'm like, ooh, I can see him sneaking away with this. But once those knockdowns happened, it was clear that uh, Usman was the better fighter. Uh, it was... An early fucking stoppage. Thank you. I was about to say, was it early or not? And it's not that we both had Colby Covington. That's not the point of it. It was the fact that you cannot defend yourself any more intelligently than what he was doing. He wasn't out hands down. He turned on a leg and was covering his head. What else do you want? And he didn't take a crazy amount of strikes no. after being on the ground. Yeah, I do think he got knocked down twice. Yeah, I do think his jaw was broken. But this is what I don't like about MMA. The judges should not get to hear any of that shit. I almost, as much as I like being in the corner, I thought it was a bullshit biased thing to do for all of us to know he had a broken jaw. Because obviously Kamara Usman didn't know it. So it's like, we all know this thing. And then it turns this immediate bias on every punch he's taking now like that now it's more brutal now it's more significant you know how i feel about significant strikes so um i don't think Kamara Usman ran away with it he clearly won the fight it was still an early stoppage and i don't think Kamara Usman deserved the early stoppage he would have fit it, he he was five more punches landing away from it being legitimate to me but they had to land without colby grabbing a single leg or coming in because right. colby did everything right especially that i see wrestlers do he like back down, covered his head, side of covered, his head. Right, 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 right. I mean, you can't ask for anything else regardless of the damage and all of that other stuff. Uh, love what you're saying there. As you're saying with Usman, it's just uh, where do we go? Who's his next contender at 170? Or what I was going to say was if it was a 10-8 round and we both had a 3-2, it would have been a draw, which Usman would have retained the belt as well there. Well, so I we would it, still would have. I didn't. It can't be 3-2 because 3-2 would mean there's six rounds going into oh, the right, fifth. Oh, right, right, right. I had it 2-2 going into the fifth, and I did think Colby was doing enough that I could have mm -hmm. seen it being – uh, close, but once Usman got the knockdown, that was a 10 8 to me. Right. So I thought he clearly would have won the fight. Even j just with it going to decision, right, right, right. I would have had him up two points on my scorecard. So, still, such a fun night of fights. Such memories in there. I mean, highlights for days. People going to sleep. Some grinding ass matches in there. Woo! Well, what do we do with Usman next? The next contender at 70, there's a line Everybody of them. Everybody says Jorge, but I don't want to see that at all. I, I think Jorge is bigger than the belt. It's so, but it's either Jorge Edwards. That's what and I those are the feel two like standouts. the UFC is setting up Edwards because and Jorge has already probably said in the background, I don't want that fight. I don't know. I think Jorge would definitely <laughs> take that fight. I don't see why he wouldn't. Would but you have Jorge against Usman? I feel like Jorge has is the next guy in line that has the best amount of skills to fight a uh, Usman type of fighter, which is good take down the fence, which he proved against Maya and ask well not Askren, but against Maya and other fighters. And his striking is good enough to actually give uh, problems because that was an issue. Kobe was just getting hit too much by harder shots, which we knew was going to happen, but he just it didn't wire well. Linear fracture on his mandible. Yeah, right in the center of his Woo. jaw. But it didn't detach. It was all <coughs> intact. But he's going to have six-month layoff at least. 
get a little it's, plate. I wouldn't mind seeing Colby versus Woodley. Love it. Absolutely has to be the fight. I love it. Has to be. Woodley does not get a shot against Usman. And I am really excited for all of us UFC fans that we are going to get to see Usman and Colby fight again. Oh, my God. Because and, that's a pay-per-view on uh, its own. Can I tell you my one disappointment? It's probably the same as yours. Let's. Would have loved to see a takedown or two. By either guy, right? I almost feel like neither guy pulled the trigger because neither guy wanted to lose that cloud of being such a good wrestler. Like, it's almost like their egos were like, let's stay striking. Right, right, right. And not even it, it, not even attempts. I mean, there was a couple touches to the either guy's knee, but it was a striker's delight. They just stayed boxing the whole time. Yeah, and it was kind of like a striking 101. It wasn't like they were great strikes. It was Colby's were more looping. Kamaru Usman had more straight. I think the body work paid deferentials and paid off, but also the kicks. I think Cameron Usman was using his uh, math equation better against Colby than Colby was using it against Usman. But I think all that shit talk, it's got to add up somewhere. Some people think that broken jaw is poetic. <laughs> I don't like my fighters getting hurt that way, so I'm not one of those people. Agreed with that. That was definitely a beating. But that's UFC 245. I thoroughly enjoyed it. <clears throat> Agreed. Worth every penny. A a fight card for sure. Are you ready to strap on your seatbelts and fly into the Twitter Let's go. There was another belt that went out this week and everyone, and if you didn't see it, or it was actually the beginning of this week or the end of last week, I don't know exactly, but um, on the Ariel Hawani show, uh, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson got his nicest mofo belt. Mofo? Not mother effer. Well, it can't be. You're the nicest. <laughs> I know. So, it's, Mo, what does Mofo stand for, though? Did they make up an official title for it? <laughs> Monkey foot. Monkey foot of all time. There it is. Yeah. So, and did you see how um, Conor McGregor called out? Said, "I want that belt." No, I did he not. He said, I want that belt, mother buddy. <laughs> That's awesome. Then, That's actually good. Yeah, and I actually I might have him in that fight. Against Wonder Boy, just because of the way Pettis beat Wonder Boy. I think moving straight forward like that Ooh. and the way that Connor fight, that it's an intriguing fight. I never thought I would have enjoyed it, but I thought their uh, mutual respect of each other and their tweets back and forth was kind of funny. So you should check that out. Uh, let's see. Um, I don't have a lot of other Twitterverse. Um, we'll definitely get into the breakdown. I just had a couple of fights that have been made Ooh. that you and I can run through really Love quick. Love it. There was the press conference that we didn't really talk about, but nothing exciting Nobody happened cares. at it. Uh, but the Shevchenko Chukagian and then the Jones Raya's fight. <laughs> I mean, I should be more pumped for Jones Reyes, but I'm kind of really not. And Shevchenko Chukagian seems like. A snooze fest, honestly. It seems you, very boring. Do you feel like Reyes and Chukagian have the same opportunity of winning? No. No, no, no. By far, Reyes has a way better shot of winning. Even though he's fighting John Jones, I feel like still the leaps and bounds between Chukagian and Chevchenko is... Light years. Cray, cray. Yeah, yeah, light years of difference compared to the so other two So that's something gentlemen. coming up. Um, not as big of a skill, obviously, but I know it's your girl. So uh, Kovalkiewicz versus Jan uh, was signed for that same fight card. That's definitely going to be a bit of an interesting tape study in there. I don't know if I'm really excited for this one. I am going to enjoy the tape study, though. <laughs> I feel like it's almost another bad news fight for Kevin Kavich. Ah, uh, that's exactly what I was going to say. It's going to be funner watching, you know, that those IG spreads. Uh, Dana, White, <laughs> Dana White said he had the biggest, UFC had the biggest year. 2019 was their biggest year they ever have, and I can kind of believe it. There were some huge fight cards this year. Kind of, if the first rule of UFC was don't believe Dana White. That is true. <laughs> so... Uh, but uh, next year, 2020, they're even planning for an even bigger fight card. And the biggest one that everyone's talking about, obviously, is the McGregor versus Cowboy. Oh, I can't wait for that one. Woo! It's going to be a good one. You still feeling who right now? I am still thinking it's going to be Connor just because stylistically Cerrone gets beat by <laughs> fast starters. And emotional. Uh, so there's that fight going. I'm with you right now. Um, and then uh, the Ziang, Wheelie Zhang versus uh, Joanna Yanjacek. That's for March 7th uh, for USC 248. And that is an intriguing fight. Uh, you're telling me I can't wait to get back my boogie woman. I miss my boogie woman. Well, she's going to be the queen again. A uh, little, the fight we're obviously most excited for that we will not go into details about. But uh, April 18th, Saturday, UFC 249, Khabib versus Ferguson. It's but a whisper. <clears throat> it's hanging on by a it's thread right closer. now. It's hanging on it's by a thread. Closer. I know we're trying not to 
jinx it, so I we're didn't... trying not to talk about it too much. <laughs> exactly. I thought you'd like this one, uh, Touchy Feely versus Yusuf. Oh, that's a hot fight. Poor, poor Touchy Feely at this point in his career right now. I thought Yusuf would. So Deke is looking good. Yeah, he's looking a little higher. I would have thought Feely would get other shots in this, but I feel like this is actually a. Um, Really tough fight for Feely, and it doesn't do much for Feely. Does a lot more for Yusuf and winner. Yusuf's lose. another one of those uh, Nigerian fighters, right? Correct. Nigerian supermen that are coming out. What have they? What do they have in the water there? They are sending out the MMA fighters. <laughs> uh, this one I'm not really excited about, but this is kind of how I feel about a, a few divisions in the UFC that were at these like stunted points. We need some new faces. Uh, Holm versus Pennington two. Hate it. Don't want to see it. Don't care. Don't make it the main event of some fight pass card. UFC two four six. Because I will be watch it, but begrudgingly I will watch. Yeah, that. so I'm kind of not excited about that one. Uh, then we were just talking about her earlier and i am excited about this these are two of your girls right here this is your this is your menage a trois right here oh let's whoop gadelia versus grasso i did see this <laughs> i was studying for this oddly enough <laughs> i was studying this why don't you have your pants on <laughs> i mean gadelia has been putting out some quality content out there her and her sisters getting them Beach shots out there, training on the beach. You know what I'm saying? You see booty. Uh-huh. Um, and here's another intriguing fight that this one I pulled specifically for you. Uh, Pettis versus Ferreira. Oh, I know. You know our boy Ferreira's been making us that hot money cash, but I feel like he's the favorite here, even though Pettis has the bigger name. It's just... Pettis doesn't do well against guys that pressure and Ferreira knows that of pressure. I like this a lot. And yeah. And the last we also talked about, and it will be, I think, the end of my Twitter verse, um, a Sun Sal versus Cody Garbrandt. Uh, I want Yawn. A Sun Sal, I love you, but please uh, get dysentery and be out for a week. Give me Peter Yawn in there against Cody Garbrandt. That's way better, way more of a fight that I want to see at this point in time. And um, last but not least, because it's coming up, it will be the Lat Bees, our picks, our award show. We're going to have special guests. We're going to have special drinks. We're going to be specially dressed. It's going to be special. Uh, the Lat Bees are coming up, uh, you guys. So make sure you're liking and subscribing and following and doing all that shit because it's going to be good. It is going to be good. It's our third annual Lappy Awards. Wow. Time flies yes, when time you're having fun. Time flies when you're having fun. Um, yeah. I don't think I have anything else to say about that. So I guess uh, we'll just take care of business and get into it. On to UFC ESPN Plus 23. We're taking that train to boost on. If you haven't caught that flick, you better because it's a hot one. Good little zombie flick out there. So Is there really one? Yeah. And oh, the Korean awesome. zombies headlining it. It's freaking awesome. Oh, that's clever. Isn't it? Oh wow, UFC. I'm that fell short on I was too thick to get that, but that was uh and that's not a comment about my weight. <laughs> no, <laughs> thick headed. Yeah, so uh that's pretty cool. Yeah, interesting. So you can catch that on Netflix. I know it's everywhere, but it's uh dubbed in English and or you can read subtitles. You know I'm a big old dummy, so I had a dubbed version. And look at your local listings because I swear this fight starts for us in Florida at like two PM or two AM. AM on Saturday yeah. morning. So this is going to be a bright and are early gonna one. Are you going to stay up or are you going to catch some Z's and wake up again? I'm going to catch some Z's and wake up again. That always works I'm, best for really, me. Really? I'm a better stayer-upper. No, I'll treat. I'll use it as a power nap, but... Oh, uh, maybe I'll do it that way. Yep. Maybe I'll power nap from like 11 to 2 and then wake up. Sometimes yep. I'm nervous because I end up missing the first three fights because my body's like, no! You're going to get get at least this amount of time. You know, my body gets pissed about it. but Sure. No, my body will tell me, like, you're going to miss the main event because you've been up all night, sucker. And it is our final fight card of the year. Of the year. Way to cap all of the years off. It's been a hell of a year. I know Dana White says the best year ever, but it might be. I mean, it really <laughs> might be. That's a pretty damn good year of fight so it far. It has been an amazing year. Especially the last quarter of the year has been nothing I but agree. smoke show fights. I love that there's been a resurgence of these uh, fan hardcore favorites like the Game Breads. Uh, but then there's other guys who have always ridden high and not that I don't care about John Jones but I definitely feel like he's lost some of his steam. 
Yeah, I agree. Like, he's not as... And he looked old at that press conference. He had that Bill Cosby sweater on with his booty all jacked up. <laughs> I thought he was going to come out and like, eat a pudding pop, eat a pudding pop. <laughs> what a bird that is this gonna, day and age. I thought he was going to come out and roofie my drink, <laughs> put Spanish fly in my drink. That's what I was about to get to. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, if you really want to see uh, one more little bit of pandering to you after I just yelled at you last week about pandering, I'm going to pander. Right before we get into it, make sure if you really want to know the way we feel about this year, um, it's all going to happen at the Lappies. So excited for that one. Almost as excited as I am for this card in Busan, but we have a 13 card bout. You know how we always do. We go from the bottom to the top. It ain't going to change the day. At 135 Not pounds. Not today. <laughs> we no, have you got the wrong one. The wrong one today. I am the right one this week because, you know, we'd be closing out that fight pick championship. So we'll get there eventually. Highly Alatang coming in against Ryan Benoit. I only know one fight on this whole card. Really? No way. There's a couple of really good cards. I fights. didn't know anything was coming though. I was completely unaware of this whole card. And oh, you thought the, the main the event got switched out, which we'll get into when we get there. Uh, I it, it like had zero steam for me. It's like begrudging. It's like this is the last episode of the series. I'm watching it, but I really I was good if UFC two four five was the end of the year. <laughs> right. It could have been like Game of Thrones. You could have ended it earlier. Yeah, and I would have been better happier. Ride. Right. Then you could, now you got to wake up at two a.m. to catch the yeah, special edition. Yeah, this is edition. the dark episode. So, yeah. This is the dark <laughs> So, Alatang coming in here in the UFC, getting his first win in his debut against Dana Bergel. It was a really disgusting fight. Ended up going back to it. Both of these guys barely UFC caliber, if that. And we know for a fact Ryan Benoit is UFC caliber. He's been speckled in there 10-5 and five against the 13-7 and seven. Alatang in there. Benoit, I feel like, is all the way around just a better fighter. He has more power, might not be as clean of a striker, but he has a better gas tank and just fought by far the better competition. This is the first one of the night. We usually tell you guys to stay away, but I feel like I can play this like I did last week. And, and it shit the bed? Shit all <laughs> over my DraftKings cards. You probably should stay away, but give me Benoit. TKO round number two. I just think he's the next... L He's an actual UFC caliber fighter where Al Tang isn't. He's just fighting in Asia. Are you, so are you playing Ryan Benoit on your DraftKings? I am at 8,200. Whew. Um, I'm actually going to stay away from this. I think it's been a good rule for me this year to stay away from this first fight of the night. And uh, I'm also going to go with uh, Al Tang here because... I'm just not noticing guys come back after these long layoffs and look so great. I do think it's an evolution of the game. And if even if Alatang's a low-rung UFC fighter, he's still been fighting in the UFC and active. Whereas we haven't seen Benoit in over two years, so I don't even have anything to judge. I have literally nothing to judge. I have no idea who he is. So maybe he's a ton better. Maybe he was injured. Maybe he wanted to work on something and come in as a full package. He's still a young dude who should be in his actual prime. It's just been too far, too long of me to be away from him. So Alatang decision, but stay far, far away. So I'm actually on the other side of that with Benoit TKO round number two. So we're not on the same page there. We're fighting you. We're, we're button heads there. On DraftKings though, the slight minus 120 favorite, Brian Benoit, 8,200. Alatang minus 110, 8,000 even. Officially a coin flip as far as all of the lines. Stay away from it. It's perfect. I'm glad it's actually the one that's the middle of the fight card. That's the closest fight of the right. uh, night. And it's the first fight of the night. Those are two reasons to stay away from it for me. That's a great point. Great point. I'm going to speck a bit on there a little bit. <laughs> so I should stay with our rules. But rules are meant to be broken. Yeah. I call it who's Pusheta. Is that who fought last weekend? Pichota. Pichota. Yeah. 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 But it is my Pichota. <laughs> <laughs> That sounded dirty. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Moving on to flyweight, we have returning standout Amanda Lemos coming in against Miranda. The close Great. money, Pachota. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> against Miranda Granger. Granger coming in and having a big showcase fight against Goldie. She, The Granger danger is a perfect 7-0 using her wrestling and just pressure to really get fights in there striking is a little looping but it, she's always in your face and she takes you down and just knows how to advance always keeps moving has a good gas tank and against amanda her two-year layoff guess why she took a whole two years off of the game, fight game 
after her first loss ever against Leslie Smith. Hold on, let me guess, let me guess why she took two years off. If I were to guess anything, I'm going to say, is you got pregnant on the board? Uh, <laughs> it is on the board and she did not. Okay, darn. Ding, ding, ding. And Leslie Smith didn't almost retire her. It was USADA who got her. Oh. On that strolon, strolon, it's a derivative of one straw. It's a muscle gainer and retainer. It didn't help her at all because she got TKO'd against Leslie Smith, so that gas tank is still guard booty. Don't have to worry about that. Lemos, though, is a good striker. She throws with power. She actually has a solid straight right hand that will hurt a lot of women, but exactly what Leslie Smith did, Granger does. The danger in here, she put, gets in your face and doesn't let you breathe. And I feel like that's uh, Lemos's hardest or biggest issues because the women she was able to beat on the regional scenes stood away from her and got picked apart at range. If you get in her face, she can't breathe, backs up and throws very uh, bad strikes. So I actually think Granger gets a decision, gets her down, and it turns into a 37 type of a fight, 3027 type of a fight. Give me the minus 250 favorite in the Granger danger. I think everything you're saying, plus what I just said about inactivity, that's how I feel about Lemos. I think Granger um, has been in there. She's doing the damn thing. You got to go with her. I, I Granger reminds me of a CrossFit person. <laughs> <laughs> she looks like she should be the queen of CrossFit. Uh, I'm interested in this fight. I'm ready for her to progress, but I might speckle her on cards. Granger here? Yeah, even though I have her to go to decision. How much is she, though? How much of a favorite? Minus 250. Oh, 8, no, 000, I'm not. 900, almost 9,000. Maybe one card. Agreed. It's limited exposure on Granger there. That's really too sleep. Lemos? So do you dump the rest of your bank this weekend, or do you save for I, 2020? I definitely need to add some money to the bank, especially after that Colby fight didn't go all the way I needed I it to. I did great on my DraftKings. But I, I'm not dead in the water. I still have cash in there, but not enough to be doing what I want to do. Not to be playing the cards I want. So I might get a little stocking stuffer in the, you know, True. True. tree some good <laughs> If you're looking at what to get uh, E for Christmas out there. <laughs> Definitely some <laughs> yeah. DraftKings cash ain't going to hurt I know, anybody. It would be kind of cool if DraftKings put out a scan code or a number that... Because I would do that for random people. Coupons? We, yeah, but we'd give it from the show, too, where we'd be like, uh, it, whoever does this or we'll pick a something and then we'll deposit money in your DraftKings. Oh, we could do that on our own. I know, but it would just be so nice and easy if we could do it through the through actual them. without having to like send a gift card through an email and extra. It would be nice to do it right from the app. Anyways, back to it. So... 8,900, as we were saying, for Granger against Lemos, 7,300. I think Lemos has punching power, so for that reason, I might put her on one as well just because she could finish, but it's going to be like one and one either fighter and then stay away from it. So maybe I'll ruin one of my cards with this fight. I'll have Lemos on then. <laughs> then we move on to a fight of the year contender in here. This is such a great fight. Buried at 3.30 a.m. in the morning, local time. But this is why you wake up in the morning. It's for said Norma Gomedov against Rani Barsolis or Hani himself in there. This is a 14-1 fighter, Hani Barsolis. Been a standout at Bantamweight 135. Getting all sorts of knockouts, finishes. Also showing us his black belt jujitsu level on the ground. Showing us a great gas tank with powerful striking and... Just stylistic nightmare for most opponents in there. There's not many people signing that contract with Barcelos, which he's had a lot of fights fall out the week of, weirdly enough, where guys are like, oh, wait, I'm on a 3-5 winning streak. I don't want to fight Barcelos. So, said. They know ahead of time they're going to pull out all the way up then, and they wait till that long. I like to call that the Brian Ortega. <laughs> exactly. The same as later uh, on you tonight. You know what? I should actually call it the Ayer Rodriguez. What he did to Zadie, Same. like he knew he was going to pull out because we all knew he didn't want that fight to begin with. And then he got injured with some phantom injury. <laughs> so this one, the guy who is will, the, the one who did decide to take the fight was Norman Gomedov in here. Mm -hmm. And we have another wrestler in here, which I feel like the name 
just like the last one we saw get triangled. He's taking him a little bit further than his real skills are at. He does like the grapple. He does have good striking, but his gas tank isn't anywhere like the legendary eagle. He's much more of a journeyman style of fighter. Still has a good game plan. Really likes to grapple, but against the level black belt that Barcelos is, it's like, all right, yeah, go take him down. See how that turns out for you. Striking wise, I gave the advantage to Barcelos in power and just wow. level of striking um, acumen. I feel like Barcelos has many more weapons. He throws more kicks and has just uh, different entries on his strikes where Norman Gomedov is much more serviceable, not one dimensional, but it's boxing with a slight kick here and there. He's not going to wow you. He definitely just puts more of that grind mentality in there and for that I think it gets to the ground but Barcelos eventually reverses it does something I could see a Hooper type of TKO that we had over the weekend but I'll be like he was in that triangle it should have been submission but the elbows finished it give me honey Barcelos for submission round number two this is gotta wake up for this one. Have to wake up for you know, this one. You know, I like that, and I'm a huge Barcelos fan, but I just don't like something about him looks really gaunt and skinny to me of lately. His body is not, it's like his age is not liking this weight. And uh, Saeed's a guy, is it said or Saeed? I'm not said, trying to be. I believe said. it's said. Yeah, I don't know here at all. I wasn't trying to be like contradictory. I, you could be Saeed. Yeah, I'm just going to go with Nurgan and Medoff. There like, it is. I know. Look, it's not weird to go with <laughs> I'm going to go with Nurgan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm going to go with that too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I think that Nur Nur he's a good Nurma Gomedov. He's an actual one of the brother, the better one, cousin, cousin, yes. cousin, cousin. Hey, cousin. He he's actually one that I think is good. I like Hani Barcelos, but there's got to be something with age and transfer here. But plus, uh, competition level. That's everything to me. And I just think Nurma Gomedov has gone against the far, far better competition. So um, give me Saeed here by a decision. Uh, I think it's going to be a great fight. Everything's worth it. Uh, Nurmagomedov also takes a punch really well, and we know Barcelos has that power, has good hands. I, I like what you're saying, though, about a submission. I could see a takedown actually happen, yep. and the takedowns add up, but I see. I think that neck could get cinched in by the by he figures it out. He's right. like, oh, I tried it this time. I'm gonna try it this way, or I'm gonna try it this way. Or, I'm gonna move to the. I think Barcelos is that kind of a badass on the ground that he could figure it out. I think they're gonna spend a lot of time on the ground. I think they are as well. So I think that favors the black belt by far in there. So we'll see whether that Sandow or Sandow Sambo comes out in there. On oh my gosh, is this a preview to a Tony Ferguson? Like, could be, this, is this like a baby little spectrum, like a 25 percenter? Yes, to what we might both see? of them represent their own individual style, but Barcelos doesn't keep nearly as much of a pace as Tony, especially off of his back. And he doesn't have those wacky extra elbows like, and elbow kicks. straight yeah. up, throw in, teep kick. But yeah, yeah. he's definitely great off of, uh, or on the ground Just in general. Just the jiu-jitsu wrestling's fun. Right, 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 right. On DraftKings, you're going to end up paying for the minus 165 favorite, Hani Barcelos, 8,400 against said Norma Gomedovs, plus 135, 7,800. I'm going to be placing both of these guys on card because I think this is a match that is right in that middle that either guy, well, I think Barcelos is more likely to finish than said. I feel like said if he gets a win, it's decision pretty much only where Barcelos can pick your three own poison. It can be decision, submission, or knockout for Hani. I agree with you, and I... Um think they both also could be playable guys. Could this be your plus money puesta? Oh wait, no, he's no, the favorite. No, I have the fa he's, he's the, the favorite. favorite on here. I'm looking at oh. But Tapology yeah. loves Norma Gomero. Yeah. Absolutely surprising. so. Very surprising. See how that one goes But in the watch end. weigh ins on this too, because isn't Barcelos one of those guys that also comes in heavy? He's a bit older at 34 years old. Which we didn't mention about Jessica I earlier, but we don't have to go back to that. Very, very true. But one thing that we didn't mention, which we like to, we are in South Korea. We are in Busan. Oh, yeah. Thank the you. jet lag, the time difference, it doesn't affect only us. It affects Honey Barcelos from Brazil. <laughs> Someone who's training on this hemisphere. So he does have international competition in there as well as do a lot of other guys. But a narrative that we do need to take into mind. Korean judges, I feel like side on the Korean side a little more than I like to think. That is true, too. We got to think, take that into consideration. And we don't have to worry about elevation. We do not. Okay. So, definitely a must-watch fight in and there. And something that is, uh, um, you'll probably remember the one of the Legion that shouted out at you about picking somebody all on one card. Like, not picking anyone from the place. 
Oh, all on one, not on one? The yeah. city kickboxing? Oh, uh, no, no, no. Where you actually uh, pick... Oh, everybody that was... It was a China card, and I picked against every Chinese fighter, and they won yeah. all night long. Yeah, yeah. Whoever pointed that <laughs> out to you, though... Mutado! Oh, uh, okay. That should be the Mutado rule. <laughs> never go against every fighter from a place. <laughs> Probably a good call, especially with them judgings as it gets into... So we're, we're split up all over the place. We right are now. already split up. This is a fun card. It's just going to be a little interesting I'm about the morning. I'm going to be Grandpa's eyebrows. I have no studying on this card. Um, there was there was some tape study that was a little egregious there at times. But one that was fun to study for was at 125 pounds. We had Alexander Pantoja coming against Matt Schnell. This is a profile 25 fight. Matt Schnell coming in with a 14 and 4 record, coming off of a four fight winning streak, only losing in the UFC. I believe it's been a couple times, but as of late, it was to Beltran. Prior to that, he ended up uh, beating or Inu. Anyway, who else is there in there? Smoka, which I was big on in the triangle, and Espinoza as of late. But Schnell's been really showing off his boxing and ground game finally. Having some really good triangles, uh, arm triangles. I believe both of his last submissions were in that position against Smoka as well. But Bentoja is that black belt. He is a Novo Niao fighter with tons of power. He just came in against a big favorite in Figueredo where... I had Pantoja, Figueredo pieced them apart in there, really showed the heavier power and just better game plan. Pantoja has a bit of a gas tank issue on the ground. He's nasty, but when guys don't go right away with Pantoja, he does slow down a bit in that third round, but he hits with heavy, heavy power and he can be stifled on the ground, what we finally saw. So I think this is a ultra close fight. I'm actually incredibly surprised that Pantoja is this big of a favorite because I think Schnell is a super live dog. Not live enough to pick him. I still have Pantoja decision here, but I think Schnell can turn this into a grinding fight and I can see a dirty split easily going Schnell's way, especially if uh, he shuts down some of the this offense game for Pantoja because I feel like when Pantoja doesn't get going, he doesn't try the next. He more sits back and gives the fight away when he starts to lose. So I like Schnell here, but give me Pantoja decisions. This is a close one. The line's off to me. I don't think Pantoja could be this big of a favorite. We are bananas again. We are banana split it again. Uh, I am going with Schnell. I like everything you said. What he... I was not a Schnell fan. I thought he was, like, any bad memory I had from Schnell, that's before he took almost a year and a half break, and he came back like this monster of a dude. Pantoja, yes, when he loses, it's to competition, but it also is he's not wearing his UFC age well to me. He's somebody, like I was just talking about before with whoever in this previous few fights, I don't even remember, somebody today looking bad at weigh-ins. Who was it? I have no... It just guy. Sure. Short-term memory. Yeah, same for whatever. Although... <laughs> no, it wasn't the last fight. It was today. It was this fight. It was this fight card. There was somebody on Bukhan I already just said that I don't that I thought weighed in heavy. It would have only been Barcelos you were Barcelos. worried about. Oh, my goodness. Um, and these guys that we see, we see them win in, like, Brazil a lot. I just think Schnell has the gas tank in this. I give mm -hmm. it to him. I give uh, the actual striking technique to him i think pantoja has the power what we used to see of him but i didn't notice that so much in his last fight chanel also i think can use his wrestling in reverse to keep this standing and kind of piece pantoja apart also in the last fight something i never saw in pantoja before the second he knew he was losing he turned he, up shop right yeah i saw it too. like that Oliveira, where i see chanel ready to make his run he's turning it on he's at the beginning of what we're gonna see to be a, a amazing chanel run i think he stays on that winning streak give me chanel decision here and i could even see a, a like a mid third round finish for chanel i think he's just gonna wear him down and do that uh you know work to the body work to the head get a couple takedowns in there stand up again i think i think i just see i i don't even i don't know what happened to my pantoja hype but figueroto happened yeah. to that hype he's the one who shut it down in there but figueroto i know slum by any means anyone so don't think i, I i'm by under no illusion, but I just think Schnell is a live dog, and I think even on a lost decision, he has fast hands. You can get like 40 points out of him, so that it makes it a, almost like a safe if there is such a thing sure bet. I think Schnell's great here. 
I, I don't see him getting finished. I agree. I think it's going to go to decision. I like what you're saying. I could switch to Schnell, but I'm there. As far as the underdog, it's a dog or pass. 100%. You got to go on Schnell side. And on DraftKings, you're going to end up paying for the minus 225 favorite, Alexander Pantoja, 9,100 against Matt Danger, Schnell at 7,100 to play Schnell only there. And one more thing let me throw in if you're on the fence about this still and you're like, I don't know, let me watch Wayans or let me watch this. Let me throw in that ATT, that American top team that Schnell's with and how smart their game plan is. Um, how do you feel about the second danger of the card? With the Danger Granger earlier. It's such a... How many dangers have there been in life? There's been a fucking mouse called Danger. <laughs> <laughs> so unoriginal. <laughs> That's, there, we have some young fans out there that are like, a mouse called Danger. <laughs> um, my favorite girl, though, there used to be a show to get off on pop culture, because I know how you guys People like love it. That. Uh, Ray J. There used to be a show on VH1 called, like, For the Love of Ray J. Or Flavor... Not Flavor of Love... Maybe for the love of Flav of Flav. Yeah, but it was one of those shows like that, Flav of Love. But all these girls were vying for the attention of Ray J. And there was this one girl on there that name was Danger. And uh, Danger was a sexy-ass girl. And I think she was from La lived in the Los Angeles area for a while. So she was sexy. So she had hung out with athletes and rappers and maybe hooked up with some. So she was with some of the girls and Ray J at a party. And... Uh, all the guys see and they're like, whoa, she done smashed one of your boys. So then they made up a whole song like Danger, Smash the Homie or something like that. Anyway, <laughs> we can get back into it. I tried to make it quick. Did you see how fast they tried to talk? That was a great fast talking as I've ever seen in my life. It's worth watching. You could look into it. <laughs> <laughs> then we move on to a lightweight where we have a fun one between debuting Omar Morales coming in against Dung Hyung Kim. I mean, Ma switching his name there. Used to be Kim. So, Ma in there coming in with some fights in the UFC. Over five of them. Getting a win over Nakatori Gomi. Getting a split decision over Damon Brown. But last, losing to Devontae Smith, TKO, and Hot Sauce Holtzman. I mean, Ma mainly fights in Korea when he gets the chance, but he's a banger. He goes in there. One of his losses was a doctor stoppage, but his eyes swole up where he couldn't see. I mean, this guy's pictures are pretty tough to take at times, as I've been told, but when that I, when you go back and watch a tape, it was you, nothing. There was nothing there. It was just completely a limb that was gone, so rightfully so. I have a shitty nose for fighting. Right. Um, it's just small and made of glass and easy to break. And so I wouldn't be able to breathe through it really quickly. Do you think Ma has just shitty eyes for fighting? A hundred percent. Same as the Diaz Swell brothers. Quick, yep. It just cuts easy. easy. Cuts. You can't get any swelling because you're, it closes up right away yeah. because there's just not that level of space and that paper skin. Right. But the toughness we've seen from these Korean fighters has always been legendary. Ma yeah. will take a beating in there and have the doctor stop it before he quits. And we're going to get that from Ma and most of these Korean fighters. So it's an attribute that we got to give them, especially in their hometown. But against Morales here, the debuter is a perfect day to know. Fought in Bellator, fought on the Contender Series, gotten TKO submissions, watched some great grappling of this young man. He has been coming out of Venezuela, but has been over at a Hard Knocks 365 for a little while. He's training out of South Florida. Good striking, he'll throw up a left high kick. I believe he's a South Bar, even switches, but has power. But on the ground, he's really just educated. Uh, you can see he's still, I believe, a purple belt, but getting a lot better in striking-wise. I feel like he's a straighter puncher out of both of these guys. The only thing is, he gets a lot of finishes. He hasn't put in too many decision fights, even in the prior uh, level organizations. So... With Ma here, if he can drag it out into the third round, it could get really scary, especially because of these judges. But I got Morales' decision, if not potentially a submission finish, if he can get to the, to the ground. I think he has a distinct advantage on the ground. But if he decides to stand and bang, it's going to be close. Give me Morales, the debuter here. Who do you have in this fight and why? Whew, I want to give it to the guy with all the credentials and all the veteranship and all that. I just think... Morales is going to come hot out the cannon, and this is going to be over in the first round. Somebody's going to go to sleep. I think it's going to be ugly. I got Morales KO round one. I'm not going to go heavy like I normally would on a KO round one. 
uh, just because I don't know enough about them yet, and the experience of Ma is far greater than Morales. But Bellator is experience. It's not like he's just some guy off the streets, but a lot of the guys he's fought were cans. So right. Ma isn't that. So if they go in, I just think uh, Ma's going to hurt him enough, and if once he turns it on and stops thinking, he's going to have better, faster hands, throw all his power into it, be gassed if it goes into round two. Give me Morales KO round one. I'm going to speckle it. I'm putting Ma nowhere. On DraftKings, you're going to go the minus 180 favorite on the debuting Omar Morales, 8,800 against Dung Young Ma's, 7,400 plus 155. I agree, Ma nowhere. The old, the guy that I see has the finisher's chance here is Omar Morales or none. I agree. We can't tell, well, You can't go heavy on him regardless. Maybe after this fight because he just hasn't fought that competition level yet, but still a fun prospect in the division. Then we move on to 145 pounds where we have Suman Mokhtarian coming against Su Wu Choi. Wu Choi having some fight of the year contenders in there against Cub Swanson back in the day. Since then, as it rattled off a couple wins, was it against Cubby? No, Cubby? it's not this Choi. Oh, Racist. my God. Dang, Busan. It's not even close. Got me again, Busan. Super Boy Choi is so... Astro Boy Choi? Korean Astro Boy. Astro Boy. Yeah. So oh, that's racist. He's so cute. <laughs> this Choi looks like a goddamn gray alien. <laughs> goddamn gray alien. They aren't even close to the same Choi. I watched the wrong tape. Are you kidding? I'm not kidding at all. I'm just like, God, I'll dang break it. this down. Yeah, good. Hit it. <laughs> Hit me with it because I hated this tape study. Mokhtarian is losing to guys that when you look back at Yusuf, like we were just talking about him earlier today about what a hot prospect he is coming up. So that loss to him isn't fair. Mokhtarian was a guy on a mad tear. And, you know, maybe against a bunch of other guys in the UFC, this isn't a good fight for him. But you always talk about that tall man defense. Uh, Choi is the tallest agent you've ever seen in your life and he's so thin and he's very frightening out there and he comes out hot and he looks good for a minute but I think he's chinny and I think Mokhtarian can find that chin uh give me a KO round two for this fight I probably won't put it everywhere but it's more so I can't believe I'm like am I totally missing something because I as far as I Choi has he's one of those fighters that if he doesn't finish you he's fucked and it looks like the entire fight almost like he's going to be finished in a way. Like, he's messy, sloppy. I feel like I have broken down his fights before. It just wasn't a recent tape study. Um, but Evolev in there and against Gavin Tucker. Gavin Tucker probably shouldn't have a career in the UFC, honestly. And he was submitted, and it was after Choi actually gassed after having a flurry. He is a good striker, incredibly long. Love that you said that. But what I do know about Mokhtarian is that he's the bottom of the barrel. I'm going to put submission. Mokhtarian. Mokhtarian. I feel like he's the bottom of the barrel when it comes to the UFC. I don't like him or his brother. They own a gym. They also have, I feel like, maybe the Violence Queen was there, who now is at ATT. But either way, the Mokhtarian brothers have never had a good name in the UFC. And I don't think it starts now. Give me Su Wu Choi for the TKO round number two. I'm going Mokhtarian submission round two. You are brave. I'm going to end up uh, probably having Choi on like one to two cards, especially at 9,300 minus 270 favorite against Mokhtarian's plus 210. 6,900, one of the biggest underdogs of the night. Well, I'm going to have Mokhtarian. I think he finds that net. I think he submits him up. Wow. Um, I know. It. And now when you said his brother, I'm like, shit, am I thinking of a totally different dude? But no, it's the <laughs> Sodique fight. Um, yeah. I, they're, I, ain't even gonna, I don't even think it's worth a breakdown because I'm not going to go super heavy on it. But... Mm -hmm. Watch Choi. I felt like he was everything. I think I felt like at weigh-ins, he scared me. Like, damn, maybe I should go with this guy. And then when I was watching the fight, I was just like, no, no, no. And you know what? You said that Astro Boy. Right. I think that's why his number's so high. And so Because it's the same as Norman Gomedov. And they're like, oh, he's got that same exactly. name. He's got that same name. Exactly. And and another reason that I think Mokhtarian, Australia hot right now. Australia hot. They literally had their hottest day on record ever. <laughs> and... Everyone from Australia is becoming a it, champion. Um, a thing with the demographic here, the interesting thing where people th might think that there's a big travel, Australians fight in South Korea all the time. It's normal. It's a puddle jump it's for normal. them. Yeah, it's, it's an normal. easy trip, so not big. But you know how we love our Taymour brothers, and we have fun names for them like Tay Less. Well, there's a Dogger, Pad po Dogger Pass podcast out there that officially nicknamed the Mokhtarians the Trash Can Mokhtarians. So 
Just something to oh, send me wow. that. <laughs> so maybe it's a setup fight to for to give Choi a win. To give Choi a win, and I feel like that's where these numbers, where the lines, where you're seeing stuff, Moktarian, they just don't do anything well, but beat trash cans in their home native I setup fight. I think fights. Choi is a trash can. I don't think you're far off there. Don't He's think you're far off there. Not the other Choi, you guys. True, it's the lesser Choi. <laughs> it's the Bok Choi. It's the Bok Choi. <laughs> 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 Love it. Great mind seek alike. Yeah. Moving on to the headlining. Good one. Preliminary. That was the boogie woman. <laughs> that was the boogie woman. <laughs> if I would have known better, I would have said you that was the boogie woman. Yeah, that was what I Good thought. Good one. <laughs> <laughs> the boogie woman is almost like our Oprah. Oh, you know, man. She's like, everybody gets a car. It's like, Good one out there, UFC. I'm the boogie woman. <laughs> Arnold. It's the Lady Arnold. If it's a lady trying to do an Arnold Schwarzenegger impression, you could do a, a close you on. 100%. It, let us know your best boogie woman out there. <laughs> that people got some good hey, ones. and if you guys don't know, you can download the Anchor FM app and you can actually press voicemail. It's so easy. And you can voicemail us at the show and who knows. Um, I know we haven't played any, so if you've already sent us voicemails and you're like, bitch, I've been sending you voicemails. You still don't play them. <laughs> I will. We're trying to work in all the technical of it and get it all seamless, but we will play them. So anyways, I just want to say that again. So the headlining preliminary bout of the night on Fight Pass or on ESPN Plus is going to be at 265 pounds where we have the Tanner Bulldozer Bozer in here coming against a little guy we like to call Cyril Gaines out here been saying it for a while told you guys when i watched the tape initially he's hit the division like a storm already fought three times this year but that's a mission third round i had him second round off by one nobody on verdict of picked gain as a uh, submission round number three i was close with two but i mean he's got it all we saying he didn't train with naganu they sparred together once or twice but Coming out of France, Cyril Gain is a kickboxer, uh, one of those French kickboxer, multi-champ. We've said it all before. He really picks his shots from the outside. What we saw in his last fight, being a perfect 5-0. I'm sniffing, am I sniffing a 2020 hype train nomination with Gain for the lat B? He's definitely a fighter of the year contender in you here. You were the person that I knew that you were for me personally first but also hottest even when everybody else like was like oh wow this guy want to fight you were already calling him out like this is the most dangerous guy the heavyweight that heavy just weight. entered a division other than francis because every heavyweight can knock out another right somebody. right 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 uh, but rosen him and rosenstruck at heavyweight right now are the two heavyweights that's like uh oh heavyweights be on notice you got different level both of them being strikers before they moved to mma and having their credentials there first so that's what we get with Gain. But on the ground, he's proven time and time again that he's learning not only rear naked chokes and arm bars, but heel hooks, which adds such a different level to the game. Against the bulldozer here, though, doesn't have to worry about much. I feel like this fight was pushed back. We already broke it down potentially once, and it was a short notice replacement that happened. But either way, Bozer doesn't bring much. He leg kicks a lot. He spams you there, but he doesn't have power. He more tries to grind you. So the better striker here, Cyril Game, the better ground game. And gain gas tank. It's just been proven already twice that gain can go three rounds easy and finish you in the third. So I'm not worried about his gas tank. Maybe when we start to get in a five, but I think this is just a showcase fight to show or to get people excited for the main card. Give me zero gain TKO round number three. Could even put myself on a submission at that again just because. Well. Actually, I think it's going to be a TKO because Bozer likes to keep it standing, and I don't think Gain uh, gets the takedown if he doesn't need it, and I think he runs away with it striking. So give me the humongous favorite. People steam the shit out of this line. Now they see what I see. I actually uh, see Cyril Gain coming in with an overhand right, and then uh, on the knockdown, getting the submission in round one. I think the leg kicks that Bozer relies on, it just is going to leave him open for the takedown. And Daniel Spitz is so far away from the competition level of Cyril Gain. I think it's a setup fight. I think it's to make a monster out of Cyril Gain and a ton of fans and a place that is ripe for the pickings for MMA in Korea or South Korea so uh, give me gain or is it Gagne? Gain? 
It's Kanye. Mutata. It could be Kanye. I don't give a damn. It's hot. Potato Mutato. Yeah, exactly. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, uh, Kanye submission round one. So, on DraftKings, for the biggest favorite of the night, you're going to end up paying the most you're going to pay in a long time on DraftKings. 9600 for the minus 700 favorite. Damn, Kanye Cyborg! Woo! <laughs> Against Tanner Bozer, 6600 So, if you see Bozer maybe going into that third round decision, even third round, he'll be worth him the points, potentially. I'm not going to put Bozer anywhere, but for that steep, I can't put Gagne everywhere. He can't be a linchpin. He's got to be just... I have so many underdogs. 20, 30%. Every... <laughs> You're going to put him everywhere. I can put him everywhere. I mean, he's up there in that 80%, but I don't think... I think a lot of people are still going to put him up there because I think people are hype. Sometimes I go in feeling hot. I'm going to be honest. I'm not feeling... I'm just feeling messy. I'm feeling free. I'm feeling like... It's a new year. The thing that it matters the most in is my fight pick championships. And I don't know enough. I feel like everybody's kind of take, taking, like, shooting goldfish in a barrel. They're, it's just like, you don't know what fish you're going to get, but you know you're going to get a fish. It's how many who ends up with the most, but everybody's shooting through water and just randomly hitting fish. Um, that's kind of how I feel about this fight night. It is all over the place. Everywhere. Everywhere. I completely agree. And Gagne is only one of the few, I feel like, yeah, he's going to win. Yeah. He's, Everybody else is a mess. Everyone else is a maybe type of fight. Maybe a couple other ones are a little sided, but this one is pretty much as locked in as it gets in there. So that's going to headline the preliminary cards. It's going to be headliner. fun preliminaries. They've been doing good about get that final fight of the preliminaries being a real kicker. Definitely. A real kick in the dick. A real kick in the belt. That's what I say if I'm Usman. <laughs> a real kick in the kids. So, anything left with that last one? No. Then when we move on to the Fight Picks Championships, to the main card, it's going to be five hot rounds. You know what we're always striving for. That hot 25. That hot 25. That hot 25. You got that hot, hot, hot. 25, 25, hot, 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 25, 25. It's like Australia, the hottest day of the year. I want the hottest 25 of the year. I don't want to even waste it on this fight card. Right? It's... <laughs> I'm just like, give me a couple of cool 10s to survive. Like, I guess you can't get a 10. It's almost impossible. It's, it is, in, in fact, impossible to get a 10 in the fight pick championships. Right? No, we saw like four 10s You can get two fives. Yeah. But I mean, on one match. Yeah, like, I was about to... How do you get a 10 in score? Oh, on no, you're right. It is impossible. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, it's impossible. Yeah, it's impossible. You can get 10 overall, but you can't get 10 on just one fight. So I was about to say, give me five cool 10s. I'm not even trying for the top. I just want to stay in the solid middle this week. Just so you guys know, you're on notice. You better do your best this week because I ain't coming hot. I'm, I'm going to try to come in. I'm going to hold it into the new year. Lappy's going to be victorious in this new year. You can thank me later. I already can't handle the pressure. Like, I could never handle the pressure of being champion because I can't even be handle the pressure of being second place. I'm heavy, like, whoo, heavy as the crown. Heavy as the crown for an entire week. <laughs> are you? Did you move up to third? I believe so. Over Overall, maybe nine? four. I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. No, I don't know. I'm still in second place overall. Uh... But I am gaining on the one-eyed monster. <laughs> <laughs> and off topic real quick, because you know how I love to do that to you guys before. I like to build the suspense. Have you seen the one-eyed monster, the penis fish? Uh, yeah. Every time I look down. <laughs> <laughs> Finding Nemo. <laughs> no, but uh, if you, you guys should Google it. Just you can actually put in penis fish. And there was a beach that got flooded with these penis fish. And it is the grossest. Like, if you it, saw one solo lane, you would be like... It's just a bunch of censored bars all over the beach. Old pop culture reference. You'd be like, Lorena Bobbitt's been here. <laughs> Lorena Bobbitt. That's a, that's a, might be a little dated for our fans. <laughs> yeah. So, the main card starts off at Bantamweight with Kung Ho Kang coming against Pi Yang Lu. Lubian, fifteen and five, losing, winning a couple in the UFC, losing a couple, beating Stasiak in his debut. Then he gets another couple, two wins in there against Martin Day. But as of late, he lost to Jonathan Martinez TKO knee. 
That was a bit of an upset. Lose a bit of a grinder in there. He has some serviceable striking go to gas tank and uses his wrestling in reverse the best to keep the fight up where he tends to do his best work with throwing some spinning heel cooks in, kicks in there every once in a while. But um, definitely is just more striking based of an MMA fighter. Coming in against Kang, who is 16 and 8, had a bit of a run in the UFC, multiple fights, over 6 or 8 now, only losing to Ricardo Ramos, last getting two wins against Brandon Davis and uh, Ishihara, rear naked choke in there in a close fight. Kang, serviceable everywhere as well, a good striker, has power. His gas tank has proven to be good, and on the ground, he's much more of the submission threat against Lou here. Uh, I think slightly Kang is just a better fighter all the way around, but there's nothing that really takes the fight either way. Like there's no devastating power. There's no devastating takedown. It just kind of turns into a slop fest of a fight. And it sucks that I have to bet on this because there's so many earlier fights that I'd be more comfortable in. Give me Kang decision, but I'm not happy about it. He's a big favorite here. Um, and I think it's just in general, he's the better guy. So I got a decision. Hopefully it turns into a hot 25 because I don't like it. I like the way Kang looked in his last fight. I think he's putting together everything pretty well. I think he is a handsome motherfucker. Um, he has a presence about him. Is he a model in South Korea? I think is he might he do a, a little bit. Is he a sperm donor? Hello! <laughs> 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 but, uh, so that's why I'm going with Kang. Decision. Uh, and I feel kind of confident about it. I, decision as well though, right? Yes. I agree that I'm fairly confident in the decision. So that's an easy 25 for me right there. There's an easy 25, everybody who's listening. Listening, we know you're listening. That we know you're not going to put your picks up. And um, I'm talking to you, buddy. No, I'm oh, kidding. Oh, damn! <laughs> um, no, but I did want to say uh, I need to get on to the Discord server and see what time we get our fight picks in because I bet it's, it's earlier. Gotta be it's got to be earlier. It's got to be earlier. So also a little shout out to Richie I mean, Jitsa. Even if it still happened at midnight, it'd still be before the fight card starts. Right. But So technically, but uh, I just thought like, damn, I just found that out yesterday night and i was like that's a crazy time it's almost like it, not enough time to catch a nap i between. know it's a really rough one but <laughs> there's some definitely profile fights in here to watch the minus 260 favorite kang is going to be 9200 on DraftKings against the plus 200 underdog p yan a pinyan in there do you think you're going to put kang on a lot of spots for a decision type of fight at 9200 he's Gotta run I don't away see with a it. Ton of points. I see I like agree. a seventy-ish, somewhere in the seventy-ish. He averages eighty-one points, so that doesn't cover the nine-two price tag yeah. for me. So I agree, unless he gets a finish in there, but I don't see playing Lou in there. I'm gonna at say all. something mildly racist, just because I'm going to compare Never. Lou to somebody from a different country. But doesn't he look like every villain in like every Vietnam movie you've ever seen? He's so frightening. <laughs> He's a loose, a scary looking dude. I thought he was the guy from Enter the Dragon, the Bruce Lee, like, recoming version. <laughs> yeah, it's not Enter the Dragon, the Night Dragon. What was that, like, life tale that they made up again? Sub Zero. <laughs> <laughs> Sub Zero. Johnny Cage. No. Sonya. <laughs> I love me some Ping Wu in there, but it's going to be a tough fight for him uphill for sure. Then we move on to 185 pounds where we have Jung Young Park coming in against Mark Andre Berrialt. Park coming in as a underdog. Was it against his debut? It was. He was a big underdog against Igra Bimov. And then as of late, lost to Ananok Kondachok. No, I'm looking at the wrong guys. Jung no. Young Park versus Mark Andre Burial. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Anthony Hernandez was the guy he last <laughs> lost to as of late. And in that fight, he was submitted. Park in there tends to keep it striking. He uses a good sprawl, has an okay gas tank. The regional stuff I saw on him, um, he was outlasting guys more than anything. Park does have power in his punches, but a good grappler is going to be this guy's worst nightmare because his takedown defense even though it's good it's limited once they start to chain wrestle on him a bit it's not hard it's just the fact that most of the guys he knocked out 
got him to the ground the first two rounds, but were so gassed the third round, he would be able to get him out of there. So I don't think Park goes far um, unless he makes a drastic change in his training. He is that Korean top team. I don't know if there's an affiliation officially, but I just uh, didn't see a big change. At 28 years old, he can come back in and have huge uh, turnaround, but I just haven't seen it yet. Barry Alt's come in though and lost to Andrew Sanchez, a prospect out there, and Jutko split decision. Barry Alt's much more of a keep it up and strike as well type of a guy. Doesn't shoot many takedowns. I think he's the cleaner striker out of both of them. I think he has better traps, not as much power, but he's more of the decision type of a fighter. This is grimy. This might be one of those where we take our own advice earlier and I go with Park in a decision because he's the hometown guy, but I got Barry Alt decision right now. I could see myself switching. This is a close fight and it's for all the wrong reasons. These guys shouldn't be on the main card. There's other guys that should be here. This is a dirty, dirty fight. Both of them have only had a total of three fights in the UFC, two losses for Barry Alt, one for Park. Give me Barry Alt decision. Ugh, big fat stay away. Big fat stay away. I kind of agree too, and I t to um, do my pick because I have nothing else to really add except for that I love Park's nickname, the Iron Turtle. Oh, that's good, it's a good bar name. That's a great. Don't one. you think it's a great bar name? And yeah. then you make a turtle out of a keg um, out front, and that's your sign. Yeah, that's dope. So clever. Anyways, go steal that and send that be uh, a cool. <laughs> Get us some gas um, <laughs> I also thought this was the perfect time because I forgot to when we went into this to take care of the business really quick, tell you to make sure that you're following uh, Emmanuel at uh, Zul tonight and that you're following me at Weakneck Baby. And for all things Lesbo and the Bean, you can follow us at Lesbo and the Bean underscore MMA on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook. And that is where you can also fight all of our cohorts in the Fight Pick Championship and where to follow them. And... Uh, that's all the business here. So for my pick for Park versus Barry Alt, I'm going to do it again as the boogie woman. And I'm just going to say, Barry Alt decision! <laughs> so on DraftKings, you're going to end up paying for the slight minus 130 favorite. Barry Alt, 8,500 against Parks, 7,700 plus 100 even underdog. So pretty much a coin flip as far as betting lines. But... Grimy, grimy fight. Again, I see a decision out of this fight in general. So DraftKings, I'm not going to touch it at all, especially 8-5. But I hate that this has to be on the Fight Pick Championship. Hate it. Yeah, maybe because they're going to stand and throw. Yeah, but maybe it's I just think they also, there is a little, the smaller the guy, the more bias there is about how exciting the fight's going to be. Interesting. I don't know if I agree with That's that. Why I just think these guys are on there because they're a little bigger. I just feel like they're decision fighters. I don't think that. I think like this, like they just have no business being on there. I was just trying to give some kind of credence. Like, why are they on this? Because one of them is Korean is why they're on there. I know. There's a lot of Korean fighters going. I love it. I love Korea against the world if you're in Korea. I'm for all of these type of bouts for sure. But give me some Korean names we know. I mean, Choi, <laughs> Kim. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we get two choice on this, and I want to <laughs> remind you guys again, I can't reiterate this enough. Make sure you're picking the right Choi. Make sure you're picking the right Choi. Some people are going to go Choi Choi. Some ah. people are going to get all fucking South Korean right. punk rock and be like, Choi Choi! <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. So this is I might be have a card Choi Choi just for that. Just because of the names. All Choi, no Choi. So, oh, Ooh, that might be the all know. Interesting. Seven. So then we move on to two hundred. Choi to the world. That's you could get away card. with that one. It's just that time of year. I'll let it slide. <laughs> I'll let it slide. <laughs> you're you're on. like, Ugh, that one almost hurt. It went right up my spine. I'm gonna let it go. <laughs> At two hundred and five pounds. We have a bout between Don U Jung coming in against Mike Rodriguez. Jung coming in as a big underdog against Cadiz Igrabimov as a huge underdog. He ended up submitting him round number two. Prior to that, he's only ever had two losses, being a 12 and 2 type of a fighter. I mean, Jung really just showed his melon head in there. 
that he could take a beating. You got way better of a picture than he deserves because he looks like a blob out there <laughs> at 205. Look back at the tape. I know. Call me a liar. He is. That is a very giving photo He might not be him. the right guy. Let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> he legitimately doesn't look like him. But what do I know? <laughs> but here, uh, Junk keeps it up. He's got good clinch boxing. Uh, doesn't have any type of a ground game. Doesn't shoot a takedown at all. He grinds you up against the cage and just kind of uh, patters you. Doesn't have knockout power at all. He's just proven. He's got that Homer Simpson defense where you can tee off on him and he won't go down and then you're absolutely gassed. And against Rodriguez, that's happened to him before. He's a prospect that a lot of people have been high on, but because of his gas tank issues, you can't trust him. He is speckled in the UFC, winning two, losing two, uh, beating Devin Clark in a decision. Um, beating, or who is it in here? God. John Allen losing as a big favorite on short notice as of late. Then uh, beating Milstead TKO, beating some contender series guys. Rodriguez has flying knees, good uppercuts, long and rangy. On the ground, he has submissions as well. A good darts. He'll stay on top of you, but again, that gas tank. If he tries to finish you with a flying knee and then throws a shit ton of elbows and doesn't finish you... All of a sudden, he doesn't know what to do in there and will get bowled over. And we saw that happen, but I don't see Jung doing that because he doesn't have the grappling. He doesn't have the, the Milstead, or uh, who is that, Allen credentials of grinding you out. He has to win this striking, and I think Rodriguez has more power and more variety in his strikes, but isn't necessarily the better striker, um... Especially in the clinch. This is a dirty, disgusting fight. But I think Rodriguez does land the hard enough shot to eventually get Jung out of there. I think it's when they get in that clinch. If Rodriguez uses his elbows as he has before, I think he can really hurt him. Give me Rodriguez submission. I think he Whoa. he actually hurts Jung in the clinch. Drops to the ground and then jumps, jumps on a guillotine or Dars. Gets him out of, out of there that way. It's a shot in the dark. If but you feel like that, you should put that on a prop bet. I bet that's a high prop bet. I bet that's a pretty high prop bet. But we've seen Rodriguez submit, guys. So this isn't coming out of nowhere. But when? people, uh, I believe earlier in his career, I've seen him off of his back throw up some gnarly triangles, even a Darce in there earlier or not. I could be making that up. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I feel like he, he does have some submissions in there. Who do you have in this bout? I'm going Zhang Decision. This is the one that I think is going to be slow enough, grimy enough, that it won't be egregious because the hometown dude scapes out with it. I don't think it's going to be a finish. I think it is going to be uh, underhooks, overhooks. Underhooks against the cage, overhooks against the cage, mm -hmm. where you see Mike Rodriguez eking it out, but I think every time that they're standing toward the center of the octagon, uh, Zhang can take a hit so well. I think the judges forget when you wear it well, and I right. think he's going to lay enough hands that that bias this is gonna matter. Give me Zhang decision here. Um, this is, ooh, this is a weird. This is a coin flip yeah. of a fight, though. As far as betting, this is really, really. I just a... am such a hater of um, Devin Clark. That losing to him is like I pick whoever you ever go against. <laughs> And he gassed on him for sure. So there is issues with Rodriguez. And he is making the flight from America. So it is a bit more of a travel for him. I don't Dude, think he's fought in the country. the Korean Superboy, not Astro Boy. You're racist. I uh, knew it. You're right. You're right. <laughs> How do you think two dangers on the card, two choice on the card, two drums on the card, you got a full fucking boat in this And bench. it's about to be 2020, 220s. Two We're not gonna make, we ain't going to make it. I don't know. We ain't going to make it. This is unreal. Two drums on the card. What is happening? Are we in, uh, what is it, a looking the, glass? The Matrix? Let's follow the white rabbit. 100%. On DraftKings, the minus 220 favorite, Rodriguez, slight favorite, 8,300 on DraftKings against Jung's minus 110, 7,900. I think fighting with myself is going to win this week. It makes the most amount of sense. Because there's such close fights? Well, no, because there's two of everything. No! Ah! <laughs> and he isn't fighting with himself. Like, that's the whole point of the show. Right. His brain versus heart, right? Agreed. I'm predicting it now. Whoa, wow. Now. I don't give a shit who wins. I just want to beat World Winning Federation this week. Really? That's the goal. It's the only one that matters for me. No offense I, to anybody else. I, I just love gotta it. Be, as long as I stay ahead of him now. 
There's people on my toes. I should be looking back. You should be. You can't look. You right? I can't. I'm only looking forward. Oh, I like it. I'm, I like it. I'm the boogie woman this week <laughs> of the Fight Pick okay. Championship. Good offense is the best defense. Yeah, I'm the boogie woman. <laughs> <laughs> So on DraftKings, are you going to be exposed to Jung in there at all at 7,900? Um, I don't think so. I don't picture a lot of points. I don't see a knockout. <laughs> I actually like Rodriguez here, and I'm going to be putting him at 8-3. I think I, he's a guy that I'm going to have a lot of exposure to, 20-30% in there, just because I like the finish potential. Um, maybe speckled Jung. No. I'm going to stay with Rodriguez. I'm not going to be speckling all that bullshit anymore. I just throw away cards doing that garbage. It's all her. I'm got to stay with my chest. You got to <laughs> yeah, just lean into it. it. It's, you got to take it or you don't. But I'm going for finishers, and that's what I need. And out of these two finishers, I see Rodriguez being the most important finisher. It sounds like you just had your Ricky Jiu-Jitsu. Your, Sesh. Your whole, and Took number two, by the way, became, this week. Yeah, and you just became Masvidal. So he was first last week, right? And second this and week. And second this week. He's catching so, up. That's what yeah. you got to be looking out for. Ricky Jits no. getting it together in no. the long stretch. No. no, that's not the one. <laughs> that's not the one. No, but I do think the say it with your chest is definitely you got to give a shout out to Ricky. Uh, but I also think um, the you're kind of having your betting style is changing to that more of a game bread style. Where why am I sitting here waiting for decisions? I need to go for finishers. Especially DraftKings. Yeah, especially. Yeah. Especially. especially. It matters because, you know, just sitting in the middle, it ain't doing it. Right. It ain't doing it. You you want to end up at the top of the pack. So. The way we are going to do that is by having another fight at 145 pounds with Du Ho Choi coming in against Charles Air Jordan out there. We've talked about this young man before. The Canadian with the slick Rick name out there. 9-2 and two, coming off of his debut in the UFC. Losing to Des Green on short notice six months ago. But this 24-year-old is a legitimate prospect with knockout power. Not the best gas tank in there or wrestling. And against the Des Green, he's going to be out-wrestled, which is what happened uh, nonstop. But we don't have to worry about that here because Choi likes to keep it up. The Korean Superboy, as you were saying, has been in those Fight of the Year contenders. The bar cuter Choi. I know that matters to our audience. True, 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 Look true. If stud. I had to pick one, it would definitely be Do Ho Choi. Yeah. He'd be my cake pop star. Do. I'd do. put him on a pop tart. He'd be your pop star, your K-pop. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> so, Choi's coming off of a two-fight losing streak to Jeremy and Stevens. And local as local gets. Do Ho Choi is like the local celebrity. Yes, 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 he is because he had a fight of the year contender with Cub Swanson that he lost. And then as of late, TKO to Jeremy Stevens a year ago. Troy just uh, being a brawler in there keeps it standing. He, you know he's going to brawl, looping punches. Am I wrong? He's one of the guys we lost for like a year or two for service. He had to go. But all of these guys are in that boat. Every single one. But he just recently, he's back, back now. He's done. Right. That's where he took that three-year yeah. hiatus after the Cub Swanson fight, which okay. after a battle that big. It's good. Right. It's good. But then he got his ass whooped by Jeremy Stevens a year, 11 months ago. So another long layoff. Uh, but for the 28-year-old right now, he could be making uh, big strides in his game. He is the local Busan native. So he's going to get the biggest pop of the night, right? I mean, he's out oh, of the yeah. fucking hometown. And he's a hunk. He's probably an all the tiger I beat or teen big, I need big a bopper. Freaking, I need a Choi picture up on my wall here pretty soon. But uh, In your betch heart frame. Exactly. It's Duho Choi. 100% bet. that betch. So definitely with Choi here... It's really a close fight because Jordan can actually strike. He has power, has good body kicks as well. And I don't like the head movement for Choi. He, especially when the leg kicks out up, which Jordan does throw, he will get planted and just worry about brawling more than winning the fight. And he's susceptible to getting finished. I mean, Jeremy Stevens was able to get it done in there as well. Uh, the decision to Swanson is just because Swanson just, just hasn't had that power for a bit. But... If this was in another country, I'd probably go Jordan. But because we're in the local hometown, I think that Troy ekes out a decision. I think it's 29-28, maybe a 30-27, which will be egregious. But I do think that it'll be one round Troy, one round Jordan. And then that mixed middle second round is going to go Troy because uh, there's some Korean contingency paying off. Which the only official bout we've ever seen uh, officially... 
bet on that there was an indictment on was out of Korea. A, a Korean uh-huh. fighter. It was the gang in Korea that totally threw a fight. Just saying. So, give me Choi decision in this one. Who do you have in this bout? I just don't think UFC is the sport. I Choi's one of those guys that built a name off Cub Swanson. And we love Cub, but... He's, he's getting his wins off. He's smart right now because he's welcoming all these killers to the UFC, but they're not of the caliber of fighters as these veterans that we're seeing. And then we saw him against a guy like Jeremy Stevens with killer power, but now it's been another two years since that fight. Uh, so Air Jordan, he's just a guy that I think is kind of hot and going to decision with Des Green for me. The reason he went to decision... Uh, is he was a little better on the hands, but Des was better in his wrestling, was kind of eating him up there. His jiu-jitsu wasn't enough on the ground, the wrestling in reverse. That's that's one of the reasons in previous fight with the uh, Nurmagomedov that I think the wrestling is just that the best villain versus the jiu-jitsu. So I think Jordan, I see him having uh, a little bit of... I think... Oh, I'm not even going to say anything about Cardi. I think it'll be decent either way, but I think he's going to find that neck. The fact that he made it that far with Des Green, I think he's going to get in the inside. I think he definitely is better in the clinch game, and the time away for Duho Choi just isn't good at this level that we're seeing the sport move. Uh, so I, if I saw it going to decision, I love everything you're saying. I think easily Choi's going to eke that out because there's no being close in a hometown like that. They'll all just see exactly. All of them but I don't see it. I think Jordan's going to get that neck or get the submission in round three. I don't know. No one's ever attempted. He seems to go against strikers. And uh, Jordan's kind of a mix of both. Young guy getting better. Give me a crazy fucking underdog here. And a, a real potential of losing a hot 45 or a hot 25. <laughs> it's, we're doubled. It's that yeah, big of an double, underdog. So big. Yeah, I, I, a real potential of l- losing that because it just seems like the obvious to go Choi decision here. But I'm going to go. I can't even believe I'm saying this. I'm going no Choi. Wow, great call so there. Me air Jordan submission round three. I actually think that the line is off as well in this. It is too high for Choi here. I'm saying it's an eeky decision here. So there's no way it can be minus 285, 9,400 for Choi against 6,800 for Jordan in here plus 225. I think it's dog or pass as far as betting as well. I can't, you can't trust Choi for that big. And I don't see myself putting Choi on too many cards, maybe one or two, and I actually see myself putting uh, Choi or Jordan on three or four because for that price, he's going to allow me to put those big heavy hitters on there. I know. But I I like what you're saying. I should think Choi KO or Choi decision. Mm -hmm. I just can't, especially in a three-round fight, and it's just too long. I don't like that speckled, like, John Jones. I mean, we're seeing John Jones fight more now in a year than... (laughs) <laughs> we've seen true fight true very line. true 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 good point but that one's gonna be definitely the lines off is what we know in that yeah. one so dogger pass jordan you're not crazy that's a legitimate i'm gonna be playing some of him where i can on my cards to l- l- allow the salary i might play both on separate cards i could see that separate cards that's definitely not but a i don't fact. see the finish for troy i only see the finish for that's what i here. agree with i don't see it finish for troy either so that's where i'm like okay well and I think I'm not, oh, he's not this a draft is weird. I think Des Green's a better fighter than Choi. Yeah, I'd agree. Easy. E- Des Green would easily eat up. That's where I think Des can grow a lot. Or not Des. Jordan can grow a lot from learning and be like, oh, I can do this too. 24. Baby. Baby. Baby in there. Then we move on to the co-main event. In a profile fight at 205 pounds, we have Alexander Rekic coming in against the other cousin, I mean, no time in there. Cousin. Vulcan Ozdemir. I mean, this is such a great fight. This is why you stay up. This is going to be so much fun. I cannot wait. Rakic is somebody you turned me on to. You were like, I like Rakic. He's got that body. He's got them hips. He's got everything. Also being a striker out of Austria, but getting a ton of jujitsu credentials in there as well. Showing that off. 12 in 1, only losing, I believe, a decision. Last sending Jimmy Manoa into the shadow realm. Go back and listen to that kick because Jimmy Manoa should have. I hope he retired, right? He retired after that. I don't know. I believe he did. He should have six months ago. But Rackick, it was a quick first round. 
the hype's all gone. Everybody sees Rakic being a contender, and he needs to take this type of a step in Ozdemir, show his skills off in striking-wise. I think Rakic is better on the ground, slightly better, but Ozdemir has come a long way. He proved a lot on the ground against DC, against a lot of other opponents, being 16-4, and four, having a three-fight losing streak against Anthony Smith, DC, and Reyes in there. Split decision that a lot of people had him winning over Reyes. Um, and then as of late, knocking out Latifi, which doesn't mean shit. That I don't care about at all. Even Latifi going, hey, mate, don't give a shit. So can't take anything from that. I feel like, uh, I feel it's the equivalent. Jimmy Manawa and Latifi are both in the same boat, right? I would pick Latifi in that fight. Out of Latifi, Jimmy Manawa? I can't, you know how I feel about Jimmy Manawa. I don't have him. I've never, I don't know if I've Great ever picked Manawa. point. Manu. Interesting bout there, but Latifi's at heavyweight now. But either way, no time has power here. Uh, Ozdemir shown up. He's gone to American Top Team. He was a guy fighting with uh, Rumble, so he has a granite chin. We've rarely seen him hurt in there, but he can get hurt. What we've just seen with uh, no time in there is he can get out thought. His game plan is solid. He hits with power and has a hard chin, but he doesn't have takedowns when he needs them, and he doesn't have the diversity in his strikes. He really relies on his power. He'll lead a shot to give a shot, and has just always been able to land with a ton of power, which is showed off where I feel like here Rakic is the much better thinker. He's proven that in fights over and over again. He has just better shot selection. We haven't seen his chin as much. I feel like I've seen Rakic uh, stung a few times in there, but he's been able to get guys out of there. So this is a super volatile fight. I feel like the the line is absolutely right here. I could see it getting even closer. People are giving respect to Ozdemir, and he does deserve it. He's been fighting at caliber guys. But I do have Rakic winning via submission after he hurts him round number two or three. I'm going with two right now. Give me the slight favorite, minus 150, Alexander Rakic right now. I love that pick. I think if the finish was there, um, and if it was a five-round fight, I could totally see that happening uh, later on. I just think uh, this way, Ozdemir's smart enough and has been in there with caliber enough guys. He can stifle off the submission for three rounds. That being said, I can totally... I just think Ozdemir's one of those guys that kind of drowns. Once a guy goes for a takedown, he just drowns in deep water, and we just see it time and time again. Anthony Smith is nowhere of the level of DC, and it's still those takedowns were every it changed the entire fight yep i think rakdick has those takedowns too and it's funny that you said damn hips because he does have that uh who's your favorite the nardiev, nardiev, hips nardiev hips that he, he showed does, us in one and fight. he has a nardiev body yes, he has that like different style body uh he's just good everywhere i think he can stay in the inside enough and alleviate any of the power threat of ozdemir i think ozdemir does have good uppercuts i think he is okay in the inside but mm -hmm. i think um, trying to push away the takedown or the submission is going to make him think too much and Rakic's good with his hands like you said. I do think Ozdemir is going to survive. I am giving him some respect here just because I do think he's a hard guy to finish. Uh, it says a lot though. I mean it puts him if he finishes Ozdemir I think it puts him right up there with Anthony Smith uh, like really quickly. It's like all of a sudden here's Rakic. I just am not quite there yet. I love him. I just think he's Young AF, Rakic decision. And that's an Ozdemir respect thing. But I think it's going to be kind of a 30-27. Definitely given the respect out there. On DraftKings, you're going to end up paying for the slight minus 150 favorite. Rakic, 8,600 against Ozdemir's. 7,600 plus 125 on DraftKings. I think I'm going to play either one of these guys as we said last time. I think I can go with either one because I feel like Ozdemir is live for a finish potentially as well in here. I don't think so. No, you think it's no, decision because only? because I think the finish possibility for Ozdemir is against guys that are guys with glass chins. Um, not that he doesn't have power at all. Uh, I just think uh, he winds so much up into that power. It's There's such a gas period in between those energy spurts. Uh, it leaves the other guys open to take over the round, I see the only finish coming from Rakic. I don't see Rakic being finished. Not that Ozdemir can't finish, guys. I think Rakic has a good chin. So I don't think I'm going to put Ozdemir anywhere. It's Rakic or it only for Only? Me. But I like what you said, that the line is right here. The, it is right. Rakic should be a slightly, slightly, but the credit of Ozdemir is just he has, again, the credentials and been in there with True Beast. Yeah, yeah. Experience all day. 
Then we have the 145 pound main event, short notice replacement, Frankie Edgar coming in for Ortega against Chan Jung Zung, the Korean zombie in Busan. Again, watch straight to Busan. <laughs> so uh, I said it before and I just want to reiterate it. Brian Ortega did not want this fight. He knew he was going to pull out already. Um, and do you like the footage he put up? Like, rehab in my knee, where he's, like, walking backwards with the weight. I didn't see that. Yeah, it's not like, here's me getting surgery on my ACL. Uh -huh. it's, it's, to me, it's just sketchy. I think he's kind of head case. He was beat so bad by Max. I'm not saying... I put him right there with Moicano. I think they're still up and comers, but there's something about his ego that needed to be needs to be checked. Like maybe he, he had too he has too many yes men around him or something. There's something off with Brian Ortega to me. I'll be very surprised. He he won't sign a contract with a Korean t zombie type fight. We will not see him fight somebody hey, so, so dangerous. So It'll be a gimme fight when we see him fight again. I totally agree with that. And a weird thing is I want to be like, what about Karan Gracie? Because he's got to have the better yeah, know, but they're great. But he's a Gracie black belt. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so they wouldn't do like, it. Uh, ugh, I don't they know. They wouldn't do it. I don't know I, how they I feel about Brian it. Ortega anymore. I'm not trying not to be a uh, Brian Ortega hater, but I'm kind of feeling that way. <laughs> so in the main event, the two stars, Frankie Edgar coming in short notice. He's got most of the answers, but as of late, he's coming off of a loss. The Max Holloway decision moving uh, down. Nope, this is at 45, but it was against Max Holloway, his last fight. And beating Cub Swanson in a decision doesn't look all that good. Losing to Ortega in that knockout brutally. We know what we get with Frankie Edgar. Ton of wrestling, great striking in the pocket and out of Gas tank, that's legendary. He can go five rounds any day of the week. He's always been there for him. Um, not tons of power. Kills you by a thousand cuts, does Frankie. But he can choose where this fight goes. If he wants it to go to the ground, Frankie can take it there. Or if he wants to keep it standing, he can choose there as well. Korean Zombie has takedowns, but he ain't taking down no Frankie Edgar. And I don't think he can necessarily stop the takedowns of Frankie's ankle pick or knee picks that he likes to throw a lot in there. Or even switch that knee pick to a straight right. I feel like uh, Jung will be eating a lot more shots. But Jung throws uh, interesting style of shots in there. They're more looping but they have power. But he's smart in there as well. It, it is chaos that moves forward. But ask Yair four rounds of what happens. Uh, was it Frankie though that finished Yair? I feel like he did stop closing up his eye actually. So they both. No. no Jung got finished. Yair finished Frankie. Yair finished, no, 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 no. That was Ortega who oh, finished Frankie. Ortega, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He finished uh, Yair with an eye stoppage cut, but uh, Jung got finished in the last round in a fight he was winning handedly. So, it's stylistically, I feel like this is a nightmare matchup for Chung Sung Jung. I feel like Edgar took this fight, even though he's the main eventer mm -hmm. a month from now, and he still signed up to be that main eventer, but he's like... I've always wanted that Jung fight because he knows something in there. And what I think it is, the ace in his pocket, is that wrestling. I feel like Jung has got the more hype on his name because he's the flashier guy here. But by far the credentials. The same with Aldo in that last fight we were just talking. Edgar, provenly, we know what's going to happen out there. That knockout from Ortega was a little suspicious. But the fact that he went to decision with Holloway and didn't get finished right away... Jung always has that puncher's chance, but I feel like Frankie Edgar is the better fighter here. I had Jung earlier in the week, but I think Edgar actually grinds this out to a decision. And the Korean fans are going to try to get into it, but they are going to be booing and leaving early when this is in the fourth round. And three of those rounds steadily went to Frankie Edgar. Give me the underdog, big underdog here, wow. plus 150. Frankie Edgar in a decision. I'm switching on air. I had Jung earlier in the week, but Frankie Edgar's a better fighter here. I have to disagree. I think Frankie has been kind of done for a little while. I think Frankie's kind of one of those figured out fighters. I think he's trying everything. I'm glad he has a main event. I do think he's a legend, but, you know, losing to Brian Ortega the way he did, I had Korean Zombie to beat Brian Ortega uh, in the fight. So my math... If 
Brian Ortega, my MMA math, if Brian Ortega finished Frankie Edgar, I just kind of see Jung piecing him apart. He has decent takedown defense and very sneaky submissions on a little guy like Frankie. Not that you have to worry about it. Frankie's so next level thinking. I just think everybody thinks Korean Zombie's just going to stand and he wants to stand and fight. So, But he was piecing up Yair for five full rounds until the last 10 seconds. Or, yeah, Yair. Yep. Uh, the Moicano, uh, that proved power to me that I thought uh, Jung was kind of one of those guys that Melted beat him. you by a thousand cuts, but wow. Um, so the Dennis Bermudez KO, which is whatever. And then, you know, even finishing Dustin Poirier by, that was so long ago, though. Korean right. Zombie, all the Korean guys take fights so long in between. I do like everything you're saying, but the guys that Frankie's beat of late to me are like Cub Swanson. And I just, that doesn't do anything for me. It's not a good enough win. Uh, Frankie has the power to finish it at the end. I think it's going to be a bloodbath this fight. I think it's going to go to decision, and I'm going to give it to the local guy. I do think it's going to be close. I do think there's going to be takedowns versus the amount of... We're going to... It's really just on the judges if they like strikes more than takedowns, and I think for the local guy, they will. Give me the Korean zombie by decision. On DraftKings, you're going to end up paying for the minus 185 favorite, Chan Sung Jung, 9,000 even against Frankie Edgar, 7,200. Five-rounder. This does go five rounds. They both have good gas tanks. They throw both throw volume. I will say that Chan Sung Jung has shown more volume in the five-rounders as of late. Uh, but I think Tons that gets nullified. Volume. Tons of volume. So I could see myself putting, not stacking this, but one or the other, Frankie Edgar's going to give me a lot of... Un you have a lot of d underdogs earlier on in the night. I have them later in the night. Yeah. What a fun fight card coming out of Busan. We are all over the place. It's going to be like that horror movie. I'm going to be at the edge of my seat. They're coming for me. Ah! I'm not going to watch it. I'm going to be turning around hiding. Like ah! You're going to be under your bed sheets and then... Oh, whoa, because it's going to be I'm 5 a.m. You're going to be sneaking around, walking through the dark house, and you're going to go around the corner, and all you're going to do is run into the boogie wall. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can leave it there. Let me! <laughs>